gotta stop looking up at the monitor. <laughs> nah, you can look at the monitor. It's fine. I know. It just looks so obvious. Are mics on? Yes, mics are on. Mics All are right. on. Okay. Here we go. Hey. We're back. Oh, the other here. So any generous offers to get you a 7742 sample for review craft computing? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately not. not. Unfortunately not. Welcome to Talking Heads, episode 92. So glad you're joining us tonight. Your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. And I'm Steve. Welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, if you are new to the show, uh, this is basically 20 minutes of beer and alcohol-related news, about an hour to hour and 20 minutes of tech, and then about 20 minutes of us just goofing around. Yeah. Uh, we try to keep this as family-friendly as possible. We do drink alcoholic beverages on the show, but we do keep the language and content to a minimum. Uh, sometimes slip-up happen, but... Uh, a couple glimpses of nudity once in a while, but... Yeah, nothing... Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing too severe. Steve takes his shirt off. Yeah, you know. you know, it's, <laughs> it's nothing too bad. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let me know what you're drinking over in the uh, chat. We love giving shout outs for that. And uh, love hearing all the different uh, types of brews, both uh, alcohol and non alike. Yeah. We get so. milk and water quite a bit in the chat. Yep. We're drinking tonight. Water. Water. Yeah, yeah that's fine. It's water, Dr. Pepper, root yeah. beer. Yeah. 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 Vodka and Red Bull. <laughs> 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 Whatever the case may be. Let us know. Steve, how are you doing this week? Uh, I am exhausted this are week. You? I'm pretty exhausted. How about you? I am uh, I'm starting to recover from yeah. the move. Uh, you know, it's finally starting to get settled. Obviously, the office is starting to take shape a little bit. I finally got the desk on behind yep. me. Yeah, You know, got power routed over there finally. Yeah, I like I like the lights you got in your uh, yeah in your liquor cabinet there. Yeah. It looks nice. Yeah, the cabinet's, classy. Very cabinet's classy. all nice and lit up now. Uh, yeah, things are, are taking shape. Uh, I finally got one video out this, this week. Uh, filmed that in the room right next to me in the, mm -hmm. the living room. Uh, hopefully the first video from Studio 1.2B, <laughs> I guess we can call it, uh, uh, will be filmed tomorrow and might be out on Saturday. Yeah, so maybe. That's the goal. Yeah, this, this is definitely um, a closet compared to your last studio, but... Yes, I guess I guess uh, it's not too bad what you what you're able to do in a small amount of space. Yeah, no, it looks good. It really made me think about utilizing the space. What do mm -hmm. I need? What don't I need? Where do I put things? Yeah. That kind of thing, and uh, it's it's turning out all right. Yeah. So, uh, did get rid of quite a bit of the echo this week. There's a little bit still, but it's not nearly as bad as it was last week during mm -hmm. the show. But uh, anyway, enough about me. Let's uh, get to the beer. Because uh, yeah. we have kind of an unexpected theme tonight. Yes, we do. It's Belgian kinda, it's kinda slash happened. German. And I'm, not, I, I'm kind of excited because, yes, it's it's. I'm getting a little sick of the IPAs. Yes. I mean, I like them. I really do. Yeah. Uh, that, Next, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm making. I'm making uh, yeah. pineapple milkshake IPA. Nice. Is what I'm making. Don't worry. Next week, we'll probably be back to drinking IPAs. Yes, yes. But this was like, okay, we got some Belgian beers or Belgian mm -hmm. German style. More malty, sweeter. Yep. Kind of got those really nice spicy esters to them sometimes so we have the first up well i don't really think it was first up but maybe <laughs> uh friars festivus by monkless they're in bend oregon yes and that was there shortly after they opened around 2017 i think they might have opened 2016 mm -hmm. and i remember not being super impressed yeah but they were still fairly new mm -hmm. so maybe this and i've heard better. that a few times and this is one of their their more special beers corked bottle uh handwritten 2018 brew uh even had a batch number on there at one point and signed by the bottler uh so that's usually a decent sign of something that might be good Mm -hmm. But uh, but we'll see. Yeah, uh, I've been knows. looking forward to that one. Ten point two percent. Yeah, it's on, a big. It's a on, big a, on a Belgian quad. It's gonna be. I don't know if we want to start or end with that one. There's right. Dangers going either way. But yeah. We can we can discuss. Right. Uh, my father in law actually got this from a friend of his from Germany. Uh, she said we couldn't have it stateside. Although you've had this one. I I'm pretty sure I've had yeah. that one before. Uh, so, uh, Palmer Mutian, uh, uh, a Hefeweizen Weiss. Yeah. So. It's, I always call it the, the Pollyanna beer. Yeah, so it's uh, a good, good old Hefeweizen beer. beer. Yeah. And then this one is uh, from Anderson Valley, which I think they're from California somewhere. Another, yeah, Boonville, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah Anderson yeah. Valley. And this is called Brother David's Double Abbey Style Ale. Now, this one's no longer in production, so this one right. was aged for a while. Um, but an Abbey style ale is basically like a Belgian style, but it just wasn't 
Right. It wasn't brewed by monks. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the monk style abbey and we've got the, uh, or sorry, the, Bel the monk style quad uh, Belgian and then we've got the Abbey style as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you feel like? It's going to be a toss up between these two. Yeah. This one will be like in the middle. Tell you what, let's go for the Anderson Valley. Okay. The, the higher that. ABV might be a little bit better, a little bit warmed up. So Probably. maybe. Oh, sure. So, sure. So let's go with that one, then German, and then we'll finish we'll with We'll do the, that. Uh, that sounds good to me. All right. Now that we have a plan of attack. <laughs> Hit up any New Zealand craft beers yet? I don't think I've I don't had any New Zealand. Think I've beers had any yet. New Zealand beers? No. Uh, you know I can go look un untapped like tracks, right. badges uh, of how many things you drink beers from different from countries. other countries. Yeah, yeah, and I I have quite a few. I think I I will have to go look to see if there's anyone in there from New Zealand, or if there even is a badge for New Zealand. I'm not too sure. Let me see. There's a wish list. Okay, here's badges. Oh, God. Beer badges. They should have a way of searching badges because I don't even know. I don't even know anymore how many badges there are. Well, this one doesn't keep ahead very well. Very loose loose uh, bubbles on it. Just like my wife. Oh, oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> She's watching. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. Here's Das Boot. That's the German. Uh, Belgian Holiday. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I'll have to go look later or something. But I might have had a New Zealand beer. All right. Uh, Wild Turkey Revival. Uh, Carl Strauss Boot Shoes IPA or Boat Shoes IPA. Excuse me. Uh, premium 100% kerosene. We got a citrus drop or the Fred Meyer. Uh, oh brand yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Uh, John says he's had the quad too. Yeah. Or had had the, the half as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I think they have it like at the uh, Mount Angel Sausage Company over there. It's a, a Bavarian themed yeah. town, not too far from here. Sierra Nevada Bigfoot. Bigfoot's good. <laughs> yep. That is very good. All right. Do it again. Mm. Um, definitely has that caramel maltiness to it. Yeah. But not really getting like those Belgian esters. It's it's plummy kind of. Yeah. Like uh, and brown brown sugar notes in there. Definitely a lot of brown sugar. Uh, but yeah, there's no clove. There's no, no clove. No nothing like there's that. No cinnamon. Yeah. There's no... Nothing. Nothing like that. Very good. Multi beer, mm -hmm. but not much else. Reminds me what reminds me way more of of an English red mm -hmm. um, in, in the multi character of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, not Abbey style though. No, no, that's I can see it's why it's good. I, yeah, it's good, but I, I wouldn't classify it as a as a Belgian. Definitely multi. Mm -hmm. There may be a reason why it's no longer in production. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. All right, on to our first news story. Yes. So. Uh, You've been to a number of bars. I've been to a number of bars. Of course, of course. Is there anything more frustrating than doing this number to the bartender on the way by? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, da, 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 da. Yeah. Every, everybody's got everybody's got their strategy. Yeah. To how to get the bartender's attention. Well, I'm and six foot five, and yeah, so I can just. It's pretty easy. Yeah, you just kind of lean over. Yeah, and just do that number, and I'm there. For us, that are not as tall as you. They're not uh, <laughs> vertically blessed like that. <laughs> You have to you have to strategize and do all kinds of things like yep. that. I tend to just make sure I'm not behind the taps, mm -hmm. and then I do like you do, and I lean in as as, mo as much as I can and get right. their attention. Right. Because the more the more bar space you take up, the more attention they'll pay to you. Right. So apparently, there's a technological solution to this. Yes. Uh, they are actually looking at implementing facial recognition to let pub staff know who's next in line. Yeah. So who queued up next? Yep. Um, which is kind of an interesting concept, uh, interesting use of the tech. Yes. Um, but basically, it uh, you walk up to the bar, it automatically recognizes your face as not just loitering. Yeah. And then it will tell the wait staff how long you've been waiting for a beer. Yeah. I think um, it assigns you a number, 
as soon yeah. as it recognizes you as a face. Mm -hmm. And then the, the bartender could just go look at the screen and be like, you're next. Yep. And uh, Hey, where three be, goes? Yeah, three here? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And of course, if you go out of frame, you probably lose your spot. I would guess. I would hope. Yeah. You know, make sure you stand at the bar. Yeah, and then if somebody's just walking by, though, too, that can kind of screw things up. But yep. then as soon as he goes out of frame, it's back to normal. Uh, technology was invented by DataSpark, uh, which uh, is basically using machine learning and algorithms to uh, identify uh, customers. And it will also check to see what your age is. So it's going to yeah. check to see if you look like you're under 25 mm -hmm. and cue the bartender to make sure to check your ID. So as, if you're, as a little bit of a reminder. So if you're underage and you want to fool the system, Mm -hmm. Just shave your head and give yourself a comb over. Yep. And then you'll you'll, you'll just get right back in. You exactly. Won't, you won't be carded. Yep. Uh, so uh, they're also looking at uh, integrating tabs into this. So so the bartender won't even have to keep track of who you are and what your card right. is. And is Jerry here? Right. You know, that kind of thing at the end of the night. They'll just identify it, you know, basically scan your card with your face. Mm -hmm. And then every time you order a beer, it'll just charge it to your... Yeah. To your, uh, your that's, tab. That's, that's when you start bringing fake mustaches and baseball caps <laughs> to the bar. That's right. So people don't know it's you. You can leave and like, I didn't. I, that wasn't me. Additionally, you could probably, if you want to get like a second drink, mm -hmm. you can bring like a, just a different head on a stick and just like yeah. <laughs> hold it up to it. It's like, he's next. <laughs> that's me too. <laughs> Yep, uh, Rhett was really bummed by this news because he he likes to to schmooze the bartenders and play them right. and, and try to get you know preferential service. Which if the bartender is still the one calling the shots, you'll still get preferential right. service. Right? Yeah, you'll get whatever. Yeah. So I don't think there's too much to be lost there. No. But uh, yeah, interesting tech, interesting use of tech, and uh, something I can certainly see being used. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't think we're going to see it here anytime soon because I think the trial for that is in the UK somewhere. Yes. Uh, so no, no uh, word is if that's ever going to come stateside, but right, it could if it takes off and it's popular. Uh, it's all already been trialed at 5CC Harold and Sons Cocktail Bar in the city, which I'm assuming is London. <laughs> in the city. In the city. Uh -huh. I cannot. <laughs> We're going to start to a karaoke. Yep. A karaoke episode, guys. So if you follow me on Twitter or on the Discord server, thank you very much. Only a dollar a month or a dollar per video to join the Discord, and you can set your own max. And uh, a lot of great people going on over there, and a lot of good conversation. Uh, you'll know that I uh, restocked my liquor cabinet the other day yeah. <laughs> and uh, posted a, a picture of some new buys. But apparently, there might be some... Uh, New faces on the liquor store shelves themselves. Uh, and it's a brand you might recognize, but not necessarily for name brand premium liquor. No, not at all. Hooters. Yep. Hooters, the, the one and only, is coming out with their own line of what they're calling premium spirits. <laughs> now, forgive me, but I am instantly dubious. Yeah, because when you think Hooters, you don't think premium. Premium or fine liquors. Yes, exactly. I think Coors Light on two dollar Tuesdays. And yeah, yeah, exactly. And you wouldn't think that if they're trying to make a brand, a brand like Hooters wouldn't start out with like vodka and rum and whiskey. They'd do like a Irish cream, right? Or maybe a maybe a milk stout, right? Because <laughs> you know they're, they're Hooters. They're Hooters, they're, right? Some kind of milk based drink. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, they are starting indeed with a vodka, a gin, a rum, a tequila, and a cinnamon whiskey. Yeah, everybody's doing a cinnamon whiskey now. Right. But then of course my wife even does a cinnamon whiskey, so right. it's not that hard. Now, as I said, uh, I, I've said a number of times, a lot of times when you want to start up a distillery, you start with the more simple spirits, your clear yeah. spirits, mm -hmm. um, your, your straight grain spirits, your, your vodkas, your gins, yes. your, your rums. Um, and, uh, and then you move into to the more complex or the aged spirit. So you start moving into the, the gold tequilas and, and, yeah. and the whiskeys the and, and the dark and, rums yeah. and things like that. Um, they're coming right out of the gate with pretty much everything, which tells me that they're obviously not distilling it themselves. No, they contracted out. No, they probably out. contracted out. Yeah, because right. I think one of their whiskeys is a, at least a two-year age whiskey. Right. I doubt that they've been planning this for two years. Right. I mean, to, to be called a whiskey in the States, you have to be aged two years. Yeah. Um, or, or to be called a, is it a whiskey or 
I, think, I, I don't remember the exact. Yeah, to maybe yeah. whiskey. I think bourbon doesn't have to be aged. That no, no. I think whiskey. Bourbon has bourbon to be, has has to be, to be aged. aged. Whiskey has to be aged, but there's no criteria for how long. How long? Yes. Right. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Bourbon. Uh, to be called a bourbon, you have to be four years, okay. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, at least four years. Uh, so yeah. Uh, as the article says, as everyone knows, uh, racing pairs well with booze, so Hooter Spirits will be featured on Chase Elliott's Chevrolet Camaro Z71 when it hits the track at Bristol Motor Speedway Whoa, on August wait. 17th. Yeah. So, uh, this marks an expansion in the Hooter sponsorship of Elliott and Hendrick Motorsports. Yeah. So, if you want to see the advertisements for the Hooters yeah. cinnamon Two things whiskey. that always mix well. Driving and drinking. Yeah, driving and drinking. <laughs> Motorsports and booze. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. Like I said, again, if it's NASCAR, I'm assuming Bud Light on $2 Tuesdays. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but nope, launching uh, premium spirits. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, if they show up in my liquor store, I'll buy them to try them. I'd try it, yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's like reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like, if they say it's premium and it's going to be like a $40, $45 bottle. And... I'll, wait, I'll wait for somebody else to buy it. And yeah. I'll try it. There are way more probably premium spirits that I can get for the $40, $45 yeah. mark than that. Yeah. I got a 10-year single malt scotch for 52 bucks yeah. this week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's there's probably better buys out there. I'm, I'm trying to reserve judgment until I try it. <laughs> but as I said, yeah. I'm dubious to start. I know. Yeah, I know. So Moving right along. Yeah. So when you think of scientific research and, and, and where you'd want to spend your money on. What's the first thing what's the first thing that comes to mind that, that that you, if you had all the money in the world, what would you put scientific research spending into? R and D. Hmm. Boy, that's a tough one actually. Yeah. Um I'd put it into something that I'm interested in first and foremost. Yeah. Um I don't know if it would be AI or machine learning kind of based. Right. Um, like I'm interested in it, but I know nothing about it. Uh, I would probably go into some drink-based science. Well, and, uh, then then this might be right up your alley. That's right. <laughs> because, uh, da da, Glasgow <laughs> scientists. Of course, it has to be from Glasgow. It's Glasgow. Yeah, right. it's Glasgow. Uh, they built an artificial tongue that can detect fake whiskeys. Because that's a problem over there. Fake whiskey is a big problem. Yes, it is. And it's actually a, a big worldwide problem. It, it is. It actually. It actually. It's. It sounds kind of like oh, this is, you know, <laughs> first world problem type of a thing. Uh, fake whiskey and fake booze in general is actually big money. Um, it's fake age statements, fake grain bills, fake yeah. fake things like this, um, and it's something that's very hard to track in smaller regions yeah. um it, it's it's difficult to to catch someone cheating mm -hmm. and having a a artificial tongue that will detect the presence of certain ingredients yeah um they said the uh, one of the interesting things is this could not only tell the difference between a whiskey and a vodka which is obviously pretty yeah, simple right. i can do that yeah everybody can do that. um it can change it can uh the tech is so sensitive, it can discern the differences between the same brand of whiskey that has been aged in different barrels. Not only that, but the same barrel aged different years. Right. It was So it's it's very, very sensitive, and it's got, I think, a 99% accuracy. Yes. Um, it can also detect the differences between whiskeys aged for 12, 15, and 18 years, yeah. which I can't do. I don't think I could do that. I mean, uh, I, 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 maybe between the 12 and 18, I'd right. be like, yeah, the 18 is probably a little more smoother. Right. It, but, it's got more of this oaky note. Yeah, it's got this, yeah, it's got that. Yeah. You know, you, and, I'm, and I'm looking for it to express certain things to my tongue, yeah. and then that electrical impulse to be interpreted by my brain. What I'm not looking at is the chemical makeup uh, via a set of electrodes. Yeah. Well, I actually kind of am, but mm. but you you get what I'm saying. Um, where I've got a pretty accurate tongue, but it, discerning twelve from an eighteen, flip, yeah, flip a knows. coin. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Someone asked what my ten year whiskey. Was. Oh yeah, okay. It's back there somewhere. Yep, there it is. We'll okay. find it out. Got a classic scotch. Got the uh, the Spayburn uh, single malt ten year. This was uh, fifty two dollars at my local uh, local bottle shop. It's got a fish jumping out of the top, so you know it's good. That's right. Uh, let's see, is it fine? Any there any any fish based label is going to be delicious. Yep. <laughs> 
dogfish head. Yeah, there you go. The, the, the two hearted. <laughs> yeah, two hearted ale. Yeah, had yeah. Fish on it, good old right? Bellsbury. Yeah, that's a that's a good uh, benchmark. If yep. you know something's good, just slap a fish on it, and people will buy it. Uh, someone's asking. I wonder if it could be used for wine for consistency. Uh, I'm sure it could probably be tuned for wine because yeah. wine is very much the same thing. It's yeah. aged. It's it's they just, certain makeup. They just have to put lipstick and a wig on it, and That's then right. it'll go be geared for wine tasting. Just call it a pig. Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love wine drinkers. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I don't know if my money would go into to an artificial tongue. I think it would probably go into more... Um, I, I've said many times, I would love to open a distillery or a brewery. Mm -hmm. Honestly, a distillery would be right up my alley. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if I make it big on craft computing and want to expand beyond and, and mm -hmm. integrate something into my channel, yeah. I'd love to open a distillery craft or, or partner with whiskey, a distillery. Yeah. Right. It's a craft computing whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. And and do it the right way. You know, start with a vodka and a rum and, mm -hmm. and, and grow the business from there. Um, but, uh, yeah. Instead of, instead of aged in, in oak barrels, it'd be aged in silicon. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> no, that's Hooters. <laughs> that's... <laughs> Yes, that would also be Hooters, too. You're right. That was an obvious joke. Can't believe you missed that one. I did miss that one. I was going for the more milk-based jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving right along. Uh, so, yesterday, August 6th, Intel unveiled uh, their new scalable Intel Xeon architecture. Yeah. Uh and as a shock to no one, it's the same architecture as before. It's based on the same 14 nanometer process. Yep. Uh, but this is uh, Cooper Lake. Cooper Lake. So as I alluded to on Twitter and in the comments, can Intel glue one more plus onto their naming scheme? Plus, plus, plus. Plus, 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 plus. plus, plus. We're at six or seven now? Seven pluses. I think we're at seven pluses yeah. now. Uh, so Cooper Lake uh, is the 14 nanometer platform. And what's interesting from their slide is they're saying Ice Lake is 10 nanometer, but they're calling the platform as a whole 14 slash 10 nanometer. So That's it because seems it's be like they're already putting in hints that they may delay 10 nanometer and move Ice Lake to 14. Mm -hmm. That's what that little nugget at the top of the slide says to me. Uh, up, up, right there. But, but, no, between oh, right the there, two. right there, right yeah. there. Ten nanometer, yeah. So fourteen yeah. slash ten nanometer platform. So it's the same platform, but with two different die sizes. They they probably just have like a little dotted line on the chip, so you can just cut it later if you right. want it to be ten nanometer. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just, just shave just, it down. Just, yeah, just shave yeah. it down. That's all it takes. So the reason that Cooper Lake is noteworthy is it is a 56 core 112 thread mm -hmm. uh server chip much like cascade lake however cascade lake was a bga style chip uh it is not a socketable processor which means it was soldered directly mm -hmm. onto the motherboards and sold only to specific board partners right. um so your dells your hps your super micros of the world Can we get a um oh, what, this one's this one's gonna be socketed this yeah. one's gonna be a socketed processor mm -hmm. uh now it does require a brand new socket as uh, uh, the 56 core is a dual die CPU. So remember all the crap that Intel gave AMD for basically gluing two desktop class CPUs yeah. together <laughs> and calling it a server chip. That's well, basically what they're doing here. Turnabout yeah. is fair play, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Um, this will be a socketed processor on the LGA 4189 socket, uh, which if you scroll down, there's a great picture of a guy oh, holding is. said, oh, no, down right there. There holding there. said CPU. And if we all laughed at the size of Threadripper, this thing is just gargantuan. Yes, this is huge. This looks this looks bigger than like a credit card. Yeah. Slightly bigger. Yeah, it is uh, It is pretty massive. Anyway, uh, so what they are, what Intel is saying is this will be on the 4189 socket. Well, they haven't confirmed the socket yet, but they have confirmed it will be available on it. Um, but uh, that the boards that this supports will be upgradable to Ice Lake 10 nanometer. So the platform is going to be a dual platform, both 14 and 10 nanometer compatible. Um, likely with just a BIOS update or a flash or yeah, a firmware update. Yeah. Um, but uh, there are downsides to using the two die per chip approach. Now, these are already, um, Cascade Lake was a 
six memory channel uh, uh, socket, mm -hmm. but that was a single die process. Uh, what they're looking at doing is doing a two die process to get 56 cores and making that essentially a um, uh, two, two dies on the same chip, which could potentially give you 12 memory uh, channels yeah. per chip and in a two socket board would give you 24 memory channels. So memory mm -hmm. bandwidth is absolutely off the charts. Mm -hmm. Lots of it. For the yeah. moment. For the moment. For the moment. For the moment. Um, however, going to a dual die arrangement limits you to only two dies or to two chips based on the architecture of, of Intel scalable mm -hmm. chips. They could only scale up to four dies with the four interconnects. So instead of a quad socket system uh, with 56 cores, now you're going to get only a dual socket system with 56 cores per socket. Uh, so kind of an interesting step. I do like that it's socketed. I do like that it kind of loosens the compatibility standards and allows other OEMs to get in on this. Although there's not a lot of OEMs in the top end server space as it is. No. Um, they are saying, uh, well, actually, they don't have the wattage numbers out yet. Uh, Oh, but I saw water but ice, uh, that's only for Ice Lake. Oh, okay, I see. Um, yeah. So Ice Lake is expected to be at 230 watts uh, total consumption, whereas Cascade Lake was between 165 and 205. Yeah. Um, gosh, that doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. That they would go up in wattage and down in dyes, mm -hmm. or down down, down in, in, in FinFET. Yeah. Interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. Um, who knows? Who knows? All I know is it's going to be uh, going to be interesting. And it's supposed to be out this year, right? Mm -hmm. 2019, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I know everybody Co out there. Cooper Lake. Everybody out there watching is probably going to pick up server grade. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Cooper Lake out late 2019 with Ice Lake to follow very shortly after in mm -hmm. 2020 was Intel's official statement. Uh, whether that means 12 months later, that could be very shortly in yeah. the grand scheme of things, or whether they mean like a summer 2020. Although, as Ian Cutris points out on a Nantech, um, Intel is having a hard time right now getting quad-core mobile chips out on their 10 nanometer fabs. Yes. Do you really think they're going to be able to produce a 56-core Xeon no, no. by next summer? They're, no. They're still they're still in their... Yeah. They're, they're struggling right now with their mobile. Right. Like, really. Really bad. That's a sizable gap. That is. Uh, unless some kind of miracle happens, I don't see it happening next if, year. If they were producing 8 and 10 core desktop dies on 10 nanometer, I'd be apt to say, yeah, they might be able to yeah, pull that Yeah, they might off. be able to. Yeah. No, they can't even they, they can't do the mobile reasonably yet. and reliably make quad-core... Mobile dies, which have far less instructions, far less transistors, and, and a far less thermal overhead. Um, you know, they're starting to make 35-watt chips right now. Yeah. You're telling me they're going to come out with a 235-watt chip next year? Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. That one's hard to... It's hard to swallow. Yeah. Um, but who knows? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know the inner workings of Intel. Those two teams may be completely different. I don't know. Acker, two dollars. Buy a candy bar on me. Love you, Jeff and Steve. Love oh, you too, buddy. Well, I love you too. But well, Steve doesn't know you yet. Just tell me if you want me to shave before we kiss. <laughs> I haven't shaved since I moved. Oh, really? Yeah. That's it's eh, weird. It's 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 looking a little longer. I guess. It, it's it's growing in. Now I've had my beard significantly longer than this, like the like the chin. Mm -hmm. I've had the chin significantly longer. Right. I've had it down to like here before, um, but as a whole, like on my cheeks and whatnot. I've never had it very long. You look like you can get, you can pull off the Jafar beard, the one that kind of just goes. Like uh, that. I've had that before. Yeah, you could, you could probably pull that off. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I have done that one before. In fact, uh, I had a heart issue uh, in, gosh, was this twenty twelve? Mm -hmm. I want to say, uh, where I was hospitalized for a day, and uh, I have a photo from the hospital of me doing like this number on the hospital bed and my beard is like this. <laughs> and it was at that point that I realized, okay, maybe it's a little long. <laughs> no, that's the point where you're like, I should wax this. Yeah, I just... Get, I wax it to a point. Yeah, little little oil on Yeah, it. see, yeah. My, my problem is I can't... It, this just, just goes into like a Santa beard. Yeah. When I, when I live, so I gotta, <laughs> I gotta like trim it. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I've, I've done the... Not the ZZ top level stuff. Right, but right, I've, right. I've done the, the very long chin and, and it, I can pull that off. Yeah. My, my biggest irritation of all... 
is I wish I could just do the straight go T uh -huh. where it would come straight down and connect. Yeah. Mine goes sideways and oh, it connects right. along the cheeks. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so this is the most connected well, my beard could, has ever you been. Could, you can do some pretty good one of those, the connected mutton chops. You can get the yeah, and, chops I, and I, I, I could do the connected muttons. I yeah. could shave the beard and just do the muttons. Yeah. That'd be okay. New look yeah, crap. Yeah, yeah. I, I am from hipster town, so yeah. it's fine. We got to mix things up around here. That's right. No, I've, I've had the beard... Uh, the, the chin since I was 18 years old. I've shaved it once and I will never ever do that again. Yeah. Never. never. I, I, it, well, it sounds weird to say, but I do not have an attractive chin. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds weird. Uh, <laughs> Steve, I would love to kiss you. <laughs> Alan, yes. Okay. Yeah. I know. Yep. Uh, beard off 2019. 27. What? I don't know what the 27 question marks were. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 27 question mark? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. That, that, that is a question, I guess. It can be. Am I 27? No. no. <laughs> You're definitely not 27. No, not, not. <laughs> yeah, it's 27 was a long time ago. Mm. Closer to 50 than 27. Yes, I am. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. And as I keep saying, I'm a little bit older every day. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Unfortunately. Uh, so not to be outdone, yep. AMD had an announcement today as well. Yeah, just one day later. All right. So you know how Intel was going, well, we might be on 10 nanometer by 2020. AMD came out today and said, suck it. 7 yeah. nanometer today. 64 core. Shipping today. <laughs> yep, 64, 64 core, core AMD Rome 7 nanometer official today. We have mm -hmm. part numbers, we have specs, we have wattage, yeah. and they are impressive. Yes. Not, just to, to say the least, they are impressive. Um, oh, what I do, get my hands on one of these. <laughs> if, you're, if you're watching, call Yeah, please, it's what he wants for Christmas. AMD's not watching. Yeah. Um, anyway, scrolling down to the meat and potatoes of this. Yeah, but it's somebody from... might know somebody who knows somebody. They can get you, they yeah, can I... get you maybe one. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Uh, Where is it? Where is it? All the way down. All the way down? Way down. Way down. It's, way oh, down. Past oh. the ads. Oh, Where? do we have to go to a different page? I think, are we on the right one? Hold on. All right. Oh, you're on the second link. Did, uh, did I not copy the first one? No, I don't think Oh, so. shoot. Nope. Shoot. Oh, oh well. All right, let's jump oh. away. Uh, go 11... Go to Chrome, and then copy the note. Scroll oh, up. Right there it is. Uh, uh, up, 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 right there. The top link. Top one. Okay, there it yeah. is. And just copy. Yep. Uh, I'll just do this one since. There you go. This one's useless. Yep. This one had a little bit more information, but not not terribly much. So. Okay. There we go. There we go. So there all go. the way down, 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 down. down, down. You're burning oh, oh, ring there of it fire. is. There's the that's roadmap. No, nope, not my roadmap. You want all oh, right there. There it There's is. There's our there part there numbers, so you can follow along at home. Let's start at the the bottom of that list. Um, so the Epic 7252P is an eight core, sixteen thread, two point eight gigahertz chip mm -hmm. with a three point two precision boost, sixty four megabytes of L three cache. L three or just cash total, 120 watts starting at $450. Yeah, reasonable. Pretty darn reasonable. Reasonable. For an eight core chip. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, we bought some eight core Xeons, the 7202s, I wanna say, mm -hmm. uh, recently at, at my office. I think they were 600 bucks a piece for the same eight core 16 threads at 2.0 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. So pretty sizable jump here. And these are, backwards and forwards compatible with previous gen epic cpus so first gen epic versus second gen epic we still got compatibility still got compatibility mm -hmm. um so you can drop these into a, an existing sp3 motherboard and uh fire it right up mm -hmm. so we might do that i might uh, give that a whirl at work um i don't have 64 core budget but i do have eight core budget <laughs> so uh we might give that a shot anyway uh so Epic 7 nanometer available in 8, 12, 16, 24, 32, 48, and 64 core models, all of oh, them yeah. with simultaneous multi threading. Um, ranging from, I believe, at the base of 2 gigahertz with the top end 
64 core. And actually there's a 2.25 gigahertz base uh -huh. uh, 64 core in their, their extreme model. Uh, priced at only sixty nine hundred fifty dollars. Uh, that's it. Which that set that's a lot of money. That's a car for most people. A used car, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's a car. Uh, that's yeah. yeah. That's that's a that's a mode of transportation yes. for probably eighty five percent of our audience. That's a really nice Vespa. <laughs> I paid more than that for my Z car, but just yeah. barely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For my three fifty Z, um, but. Uh, Compare this to Intel scalable 8180, uh, you know, 28 core chip yeah. at 10 grand, between 10 and 17,000, depending on who you are and what your buying power is. I like that, but the human eye can only see eight cores, 16 bits. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but available with up to 256 megabytes of cache, up to 225 watt of TDP. Uh, pretty insane numbers right out of the gate so obviously these are not for the everyman no. but this is what's coming for Threadripper yep. so Threadripper 2 Threadripper 2 yeah. right, or no Threadripper 3 is it 3? 3 yeah okay. because we already have second gen Threadripper okay. with, with 32 cores Okay. first gen was the 1950X so we're, gonna, we're probably going to see a 64 core Threadripper we're probably going to see a 64 core Threadripper maybe mm -hmm. with a 3.0 gigahertz base mm -hmm. Um, you know, where they can afford a little bit more uh, TDP, a little bit more thermal dissipation. Um, when you're in these type of servers, they're typically 2U applications um, is, is what they spec these for. Sometimes they're 1U, but 1U you're gonna, especially with that 225 watt TDP per chip, you're gonna be really, really constrained. Um, but on a 2U application, this is totally cool. Uh, it's totally doable with, with cooling solutions that exist and not even going water, just a crap ton of airflow. Um, but we're probably going to get a 3 to 3.2 gigahertz 64 core Threadripper yeah. with a 3.4 to 3.6 gigahertz boost 250 watt TDP I would say uh, that and, about right. and priced probably significantly less probably in the $2,000 uh, I was going to say like maybe 1500 I think it'll be more than 1500 because the 2990WX which is the 32 core part is 1600 bucks it's 1599 and so I would say maybe in the two thousand, maybe twenty two hundred dollar range, but you consider AMD's upcoming thirty nine fifty X is rumored to take out the thirty one seventy five twenty eight core mm -hmm. and and the ninety nine ninety XE and the ninety nine eighty XE at you know seventeen hundred dollars and yes. three thousand dollars respectively. Um, probably not the thirty one seventy five X in all applications, but certainly in single threaded applications uh, would probably outdo it. But twenty two hundred bucks, I could totally see that yeah. as a viable workstation CPU. Uh, especially It'd be very high end for a workstation, but, but it's still, but but it's still viable. But especially what Intel has been selling their parts at. Yes, I know. Yeah. You know, when you consider three thousand for the thirty one seventy five X, and that was before they had that as a platform. Until then, it was the the twenty nine eighty at eighteen hundred bucks. Yeah. And and they've had some pretty crazy expensive workstation CPUs before in the Xeon W class yes. at, at you know twenty five hundred and three thousand dollars. Why not twenty two hundred bucks for a sixty four core? That's yeah. my guess. I'd, I'd I'd like to see the benchmarks mm -hmm. when it comes out. There's nothing I like more than just going home and sitting down on my couch and looking at benchmarks. Yep. Uh, hey Jeff, any third gen Ryzen builds? I'm out of the loop for some time. Yeah, one right there. One's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I've been out of the loop for some time too. Uh, I haven't. In I've the only of moving and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, I was moving and yeah. Uh, so I completely missed the rise in third gen launch. Uh, like the temporary studio looks good. Thank you so yeah, much. Not bad. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been pretty happy with with how this is is turning out. Yeah. Um, finally got a shelf up in here, so I've actually yeah. got some some storage. And I mean, you guys can't see over here. It's a little. It's, Feels a little tight, but it's a little tight. But from uh, your perspective, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the tour. Yeah. So there's the door. Uh, I do have a little shelf that's right over there. That's one of my existing shelves, uh, and that's pretty much it. They're all important uh, liquor cabinets. Right, right over, there. right yeah. over here, we've got the camera. We've got some uh, overflow booze in the closet. A liquor cabinet 2.0. Yep. Uh, so we've. I do have my forty one of my forty three inch four uh, K screens right above the uh, camera there. Yep. The camera is kind of tucked in this little alcove. Uh, we've got another closet over there with, uh, honestly, all of our switching equipment for everything. Yeah. And that's it. 
it's a very very tiny space yeah but uh but as falcon says very good use of space yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah it's very good i've been really happy with the setup thus far um i, I I haven't shot a video in here yet, but just getting the setup and walking right. through my regular processes, I'm pretty happy with it. It's kind of like I got a bit of a hoarder's feng shui going on here. Right. Yeah. Right. It's it's a little crowded, but it's still okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, and we have a ceiling fan finally. Yes. So oh can, yeah. With a little air circulation going in here. Yeah, I know. I'm almost done too. Ah. So there are some interesting skews inside of the uh, the the epic lineup. Not to get too far off topic. Here. Right. 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 Uh, LOL, overflow booze problems. <laughs> yes, I know, such a problem. Sorry. Um, I buy all of my house liquors in bulk. And so I have Seagram 7, uh, Gordon's London Dry, uh, Bacardi White, uh, Sailor Jerry Spice Drum, yeah. uh, New Amsterdam Vodka. Those are my, my house liquors. So I can buy them for like less than $20 for a handle. Mm -hmm. And then I actually also have the fifth bottles for those, and I will fill the fifth fill bottles up, and keep those on the counter yep. out in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, so you can refill them. Right, exactly. And and still keep them handy. And, yeah. and, well, you know. I do that with, like, because uh, I bought the Crystal crystal Skull Vodka. Yeah. Right? And it's such a cool bottle. You don't want to throw that out. Right. So I just get cheap vodka and... Like my, my 10 forward vodka. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is still 10 forward vodka. But that that vodka is still in the space. It's not empty. Yeah. I, I did get these one vodkas uh, last year, and they were on clearance. And they it was kind of unique because it had like a programmable uh, LED marquee across the front. What's that? What do we got? Congrats on getting the audio working on the secondary cams. Yay! Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> yep. So, uh, anyway... Yeah, your your LED marquee yeah. bottle is pretty yeah, sweet. That's pretty sweet. So I reuse those too. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anyway, uh, so there's a couple interesting skews here on the Threadripper two or Threadripper on the Epic two uh, uh, skews. There is a 3.2 gigahertz eight core skew for five hundred seventy five dollars. The seventy two sixty two. Yeah. With one hundred twenty eight megabytes of cache, which is double the amount that's of cache the of the cache. other eight yeah. core. And it's and it's only like a hundred bucks more. It's a hundred bucks more. It's yeah. one hundred twenty-five. Yeah, yeah, five twenty-five for the skew. Um, that is the only skew that's above two gigahertz. However, if you scroll up a little bit to the seventy-five forty-two, that is a two point nine gigahertz thirty-two core with a turbo to three point four and one hundred twenty-five watts. Also with the same one twenty-eight cache. Yeah. I was hoping for a little bit more cash, but that chip is only uh, thirty-four hundred dollars. And if Only thirty four hundred. Well, <laughs> if you consider that's going to yes, mop the floor with ninety nine percent of Intel uh, Xeon uh, chips. Yes. Yeah, it will. In its competition, that's insane. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely insane. When their when their mid range SKUs beat their top end, the other competition's top end SKUs. That's right. Pretty good. Right. Oh, by the way, we can double that. Yeah. Right. Um, so almost top to bottom, this is pretty epic. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Honestly, the eight core SKUs, they are gonna get some competition from some lower end Intel Xeon parts in the in the six core and eight core. And especially for the efficiency standpoint from the the small business server right. kind of stuff. Uh, the eight core 35 watt parts, uh, the the what is that, the 1601 Xeon X right. or something like that comes to mind as as a very, very low end part, but with eight core 16 threads, ECC memory support, dual channel memory. Um, Epic hasn't proven that they're going to beat that yet. However, in that case, maybe a Ryzen 3600, because remember, that still has ECC memory support. Yep. Six cores, you know, 12 threads, and probably easily beats out that at a slightly higher wattage. Why not? So I haven't seen any One U applications with a Ryzen 3600, but, you know, the year is young. Yeah. It's only halfway done. Well, mm -hmm. a little over halfway. And if you remember, a lot of uh, there were a lot of One U server applications that came out with i5 and i7 parts mm -hmm. um, for for quad core and 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 eight thread level parts for for like small business and small office servers or branch which office. Which are fine servers, for just that type of thing. Which yeah. are fine for that yeah. type of thing. You don't need ECC memory. You're no. not running a lot of VMs. You're running a couple different application services and maybe an Active Directory yeah, server. Yeah, in some cases, no VMs. I mean, and, it's right. Like, yeah, like, exactly. Just just bare metal services. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's uh, very interesting. 
I would like to let you know that this channel was how I started my own business. I have mastered NAS servers because of you, thanks to your self-employed. That is freaking incredible. That's really man. good. That is awesome, and congratulations. How about a little kickback? No, mm. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> a little something, something yeah, in Jeff's yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that is uh, that is freaking awesome, man. Um, I'm, I'm glad you got something out of the channel. I'm glad the tutorials kind of sparked an interest in it. Um, I try to be base level on my tutorials to get anyone who wants to start started mm -hmm. and give you all the relevant terms that if you don't understand it, you can Google it and learn more. Yeah. Um, I, I've done a couple of deep dives on, on the channel and they've done okay, but my base level tutorials have mm -hmm. honestly done the best. And, and that's, that's absolutely what I love to see. Uh, Eddie, join the uh, join the Patreon. Get on the Discord. Chat about it. We'd uh, we'd love another yeah. another NASA oh, yeah. expert on the channel. Especially if you have any questions, you can probably get some instant feedback. Absolutely. Not only Jeff, but but there's a lot of other people who. I ask questions on there too. They're, it's they're, okay. We, we have a lot of users that are very very knowledgeable. Yes. Very knowledgeable. Yep. So, uh, I like the review of the desk. By the way. Uh, uh, it was really good. Just disappointed in the build quality for the price, though I've been looking for a good desk. Actually, I did get some feedback from Arazi on that, and they said actually some of the wobble could be taken care of with actually loosening some of the tension on the lower legs. Mm. Um, they did have a, uh, a an assembly video, which they didn't send me in advance, and, and they said they are working on their instructions as well to for the clarify that out, yeah. uh, some of the issues that I had. Mm -hmm. But uh, but they said, yeah, you are supposed to leave the legs kind of loose and then put them on the desk exactly as I figured out. It wasn't like just go to Denny's, get some sugar packets, stuff it underneath there. Right, just... no. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and I did actually try to level the desk and make sure that that wasn't the problem. That wasn't it. They said actually loosening um, the very lower joint on the desk between the legs and the feet can actually eliminate that wobble entirely. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I'm probably not going to do a video on it, but, uh, but as soon as I test that, I might comment on the video and, and it just, you know, uh, honestly, if the wobble goes away, it changes my opinion of the desk because I loved the materials on it and there was so much potential there yep. and it just kind of fell flat. Um, but, uh, if the wobble is gone, that turns it from a, you know, well, I can go to Ikea and get something for 90 bucks and get right. better to, you know what? This is a wonderfully stable desk that is rock solid yep. and, and honestly, uh, kind a of great buy at three fifty. Yeah, right. Because uh, I, I have to buy office furniture all the time at like four hundred and fifty bucks a piece, mm -hmm. and that stuff is like made of steel, and uh, and there's no wobble in it whatsoever. But you're spending four hundred fifty bucks, and if you can get that at three fifty yeah. and gamer themed with a full size mouse pad and a Star Trek logo yeah. on top, that full size mouse pad was pretty cool. That's totally worth it. Uh, I like it because if you spill something on it, just take out back of the hose. Right. Uh, and, and that, it was actually a non-permeable surface is, is yeah. another thing that they, they advertised. They, they really should put some research on a uh, Cheeto dust phobic uh, surface. <laughs> Cheeto dust and Mountain Dew resistant. Yeah, yeah, Cheeto dust. Yeah. As no one wants those those uh, yellow stains all over their uh, right. giant mouse pad. All right, so we're on to the next story. Uh, we're on to the next, next beer, beer as well. Yeah, we should probably get on Thanks to Thanks for the, stealing my transition. The, <laughs> the Pollyanna beer. That's right. <laughs> uh, Paul Anner. Yes, I know. I believe. It is called that. I was thinking of the old uh, Disney movie, Pollyanna. Pollyanna. Pollyanna, Pollyanna. Hey there, finally get to watch you guys live. Thanks for tuning in. Spoiler, it's a so-so desk. Uh, yeah. That was my impression. Uh, but as I said, the company reached out and uh, and there might be a little bit more to the story. I'll update it in the comments and pin it if, uh, if I get that opportunity. Let's see what we got. I think this is... I was going to say, I'm a little short. No, wait, you're a little short. Yeah, Dang it. Bring me that. A little more on yours. On there. there we go. And then I'll, get, I'll just give you the swallow. There All right. Go. It was your beer to begin with, so it's only fair. Oh, it's German. Oh, it's mm. German. I love a good German beer. <sighs> I I am a sucker for a good hef. I am a sucker for a good hef. That was the last beer I brewed before this new IPA. Wasn't as good as this, but it did have those um, really nice spicy clove esters and stuff like that. Like this one has. It's there. This has all of that. It's but it's super light body. Yeah, it's very light. Oh, that's it's not super thick. What I found out. If you want to get this, not that I don't little, know. little biscuity bread at the yeah. end. So if you're if you're making your own beer and you want to get that really kind of banana clovey type of thing from your uh, hefeweizen yeast, you have to ferment it at higher temperatures. Yes, you have to get it like between 
between 75 and 80 degrees fermenting at mm -hmm. those temperatures. And Instead of the 60 that you're normally yeah, doing yeah, IPAs exactly, yeah, and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, have I ever had Bosnian beer? I don't believe I've had any Bosnian beer. I could probably check on tapped and verify. No. But I don't think I don't I've think had I've any had from Bosnia. I'd love to try some. Yeah. Uh, but seriously, someone who picks up a 7 nanometer Epic 8 core 16 thread chip, message me. Got to know if you may, if I made a terribly timed decision. Um, okay. All right. Uh, next story. Uh, we're all familiar with the special edition SUVs that have been out there. Yes. Uh, Ford had a had a deal with Eddie Bauer for yeah, a while. Yeah, they had the Eddie Bauer ones. There's a Harley Davidson Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so we're we're used to these different brand tie-ins, and you know, you go, well, what what does Eddie, Eddie Bauer have to do with Ford? Well, I don't it comes know. With more denim, I guess. yeah. I more know. more denim and leather. Yeah. Uh, what in the world does Razor have to do with electric cars? I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, Neo, a Chinese electric car manufacturer, and Razor have jointly launched the Neo ES6 Night Explorer Limited Edition. Yeah. This is an all-electric SUV, um, and I'll give you the meaty specs first. Uh, 544 horsepower out of its electric engines, mm -hmm. 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. Which is pretty good. Pretty, pretty darn good. impressive yeah. for an SUV. For, well, for any car. Yeah, for any car. Right? Well, that, that, that amount of horsepower is right. quite a bit. Um, so, uh, this is a Chinese market electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason it's the Razor edition um, is Razor is, is uh, implementing Razor chroma and hue lighting to the interior. So, that's right. This you SUV has, has RGB. RGB. Yeah, you got RGB car. If you couldn't get enough of it. Linus is saying, OB still my heart. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if you want RGB, not only when you're at home, but on your daily commute, yeah. this may be the car for you. Uh, the other thing that, that this is getting is THX spatial audio. So mm -hmm. uh, so virtual surround sound, or actual surround sound, as it were. Um, so now, when you start your car up, since there's no engine sound, it goes... Yeah, the, the whole THX. Yeah, gets the, yeah. the THX sound effect. You know, I would actually love that in my car. That, that would you be know, pretty cool. Push button start and... You get the orchestra. Yeah. yeah, that would be cool. That'd be awesome. That was actually pretty pretty good interpretation of the <laughs> old THX intro. With with no setup and you just did that, I probably would have been able to pick that out. <laughs> so for those who don't know, the THX intro is a chord that starts up here and a, and a bass two notes that start here. And the chord mm -hmm. does this. And, uh, and so it's actually a pretty simple thing to do on a synthesizer yeah. with, with some bending notes um, where you're starting with a very dissonant chord and it literally fades into a major chord. Mm -hmm. uh, but the notes cross each other and so you get all of these varying intersect lines. And the reason it's a test tone is it really freaks the living hell out of some speakers mm -hmm. um, because the cones can only emanate so many tones at the same time. Right. And, when you, when, you, and when you have all these cross frequencies, it's really difficult to pick them out. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a constantly variable chord that lands in a major yeah. chord. That's very, very pleasant to listen to when it's done. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you start high and then kind of go low and then fade back into a re into a resolution note, mm -hmm. you can get the THX sound effect. Cool. I was a music major at one point, yeah. <laughs> so sue me. Uh, I was going to be a music teacher, but now now I do YouTube videos. Yeah, that's pretty much the same thing. And, and server administration <laughs> again, pretty much the same thing. It's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same thing. Ah. Left brain, right brain, whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so RGB must run 100% faster than the normal version. That's how they got the 4.70 yep. to 60. Yep. This car was actually an eight-second car. Yeah. Uh, with uh, without the RGB added. Yeah, it, the, the RGB made yep. it a little bit faster. Yep, totally. Just a little bit faster. Um, Screw aerodynamics. That doesn't do anything. <laughs> right. It is the RGB that makes cars go faster. Proven. Proven. <laughs> Everything inside has a nice click. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So yeah, if you haven't seen the car, there it is. It's actually a pretty attractive car. Right? Uh, I mean, it's yeah, it, it looks all right. I mean, it, I, I do like the LED. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like my first pick, but it wouldn't necessarily be my first pick. And it's definitely got the Razor Naga inspired yeah. look to it. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a mouse. Just throw some buttons on the side, yeah. and you can probably do it. 
Um, but it's definitely not a, a non-attractive car. I do, I do like the use of the LED bars. I like the LED projection lights that are on it. Um, it's got a roof rack. I could probably do without the green trim and the Razor logo. It, that's going to be obviously... Right. I mean, it's a walking advertisement. Or mm -hmm. I should say walking. A driving advertisement mm -hmm. for Razor. Uh, and I think a they rolling even, advertisement. Ro rolling advertisement. There you go. Uh, uh, but I think they're they're trying to market it towards gamers and and they're marketing it towards esports players. Esports thus, players, thus yeah. the ES six. The ES that's the esports right. Yeah. Um, so it will be the official car of the Razer esports team, unsurprisingly. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you log in to the east to the uh, to the Razer storefront, you can actually win a test drive experience coupon, uh, decals, and other great prizes. Not an advertisement from Razor. Yeah. This is just reading just the article. Reading author, yeah. um, but uh, it also says uh, the two companies will explore integrating Razor Chroma and Hue lights and THX spatial audio sound, which by the way, Razor owns THX, which is why the, uh, there's that tie-in. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing a better quality and driving experience to discerning customer base of gamers through immersive ambient lighting effects and innovatively enhanced in-vehicle audio. End quote. Neo and Razer are devoted to creating a car dedicated to the influx of esports players and enthusiasts. That's a real roundabout way of saying lights flashy when music play. -y. Right. Yes, I think you summed it up <laughs> very, very well. <laughs> I'm going to approve this comment. Why the F are these, uh, these people, these alcoholics talking about things? Uh, like they know what they're talking about. Uh, I don't know, 12 years experience in, uh, in the IT industry. I don't know, I, I have administered servers for the last 11 years of my life. I don't know, I might know something. Yeah, something, one or two. One or two things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve, how long have you been a programmer? 20 plus years. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Question answer? Around. Yeah. There you okay. Go. All right. If you don't like the content, that's up to you. You can yeah. turn it off. Yeah. I'm not on your end of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving yeah, on. That means it's better than others. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, this was an interesting story. Uh -huh. This this next one. Are you still distracted by the last I, one? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just reading the comments. I was reading the comments. Yes. Okay. Uh. This was an interesting story because this story immediately was divisive among gamers. It was, and yeah, I and I I, I read about this uh, this morning too before I saw the notes for the thing. And so. and there's a lot of uninformed people out there. There's a lot of uninformed people on we'll say Reddit. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, well, oh, I, I, I just brought the Reddit hate train on myself. Yeah. Here it comes. Well, when when something this controversial comes up, there's going to be a lot of buzz. So. So just just peel the bandit off and show them. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> what do we got? Your whole show is built around alcohol. How are they not alcoholics? Um, I'm not alcohol dependent. Yeah. I don't drink to excess. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy the craft of it. Oh. It doesn't rule my life. I don't rule it. Honestly, three beers is not going to kill you. Right. I mean. I don't drink to excess. I never drink and drive. Yeah. Uh, it in no way impacts daily living nope sleep relationships I can't even remember the last time economics I yeah I, I basically work two full time jobs have a wife and two kids and I've owned my house for the last nine years am I an alcoholic? doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like it so yeah alright so yeah okay you're timed out okay cool <laughs> Don't feed the trolls, Jeff. Eh, uh, whatever. Okay. All right, whatever. I just like addressing the uh, Jeff's an alcoholic. Really? You, do you think I could be on camera for how many hours yeah. per week? You, yeah. And work a full-time yeah. job? And not just work a full-time job, run a department. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At a major company. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so this story, Take-Two Interactive, uh, 2K Games a la Rockstar. Right. Parent company of both. Mm -hmm. uh, made some headlines this week. And, and not for what gamers interpret it as good reasons. No, yeah, this is not a positive thing. Right. Uh, uh, basically, the headline was that Take-Two swatted a, a YouTuber. And mm, not quite that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
That's that's what it was being taken as. Yes. It was uh, it was raided the home of a YouTuber is yeah. the first headline that I saw. Yes, that's I saw that too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow the roll. Whoa. Slow slow it down. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, YouTuber by the name of what was it? Uh, Submato. 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 Um, S U P M A T T O. Right. Uh, that's sent goons was was another one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Q revelations amongst us viewers that were alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, but get help if you need it. Yeah. Um, uh, Submato claimed he was the target of an investigation by Take Two Interactive over Borderland Three leaks. Now all of this came as a. Uh, uh, Basically, a YouTube post by Submato mm -hmm. that said uh, Take Two Interactive sent two private investigators over to his house. Mm -hmm. And he agreed to talk to them of his own volition. Wasn't threatened, wasn't invaded, wasn't swatted, wasn't right. persecuted. These they, were were, asked, they were asked, to, they knocked at his door, they were asked to talk to him, he talked to them. He talked to them. He, he, didn't, he didn't have any obligation to talk to them, so he right. voluntarily talked to them. And Reverend, uh, keep keep that hammer swinging. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so, but but said uh, I don't have anything to hide. They questioned me about various things related to my channel, yeah. that live stream that I, that was discussed on my channel, and they told me they were from Take Two Interactive. End quote. Yeah. Um, basically, all of these allegations are because Submato posted a YouTube video in which he discussed unreleased details of Borderlands Three. Now, Submato was privy to that access before. He's likely signed an NDA with Take Two Interactive. Well, from from the articles that I've read, that there was no NDA whatsoever. Okay, no NDA. That this that this was more of a, um, you know, you have the super fans, right? They're, they're they're well entrenched into the community, and the community digs things. Yeah. They go through they go through digging through. I, I couldn't quite source tell code of stuff. Right. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. I, from the news articles, I couldn't quite tell if he was an official partner of Take Two or if he no. was a super fan of. Take he was. Two. He was. He was. From what I've the, the couple articles I read, he was more of a super fan, and the information that he espoused was stuff that other people derived or stuff that got leaked out. He was not the source of the leak. He was just relaying the leak, or relaying the information that that was relayed to him, basically. So, yeah, it wasn't exactly like. He had an NDA and he broke the NDA or anything like that. I love watching the band hammer swing. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, so like I said, from the news articles, I couldn't quite tell if he was an official partner, no, a, he was not. an included streamer, or if he was just a super fan. So, he's, just, he's more of a super fan. Yeah. Anyway, so no NDA signed, but this was not just some random happenstance of they found one guy who leaked information and they didn't like it and they sent goons after him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This was a 10 month long investigation yeah. into him by Take Two Interactive. I don't think it's necessarily just to him. I think but, that. But to leaks in general. I think there's leaks in general, yeah. And it seems, to me personally, it's a pretty heavy handed approach. And I think PR wise, this kind of blew up in their face. Like Take, take Two is. is kind of having a, a bit of a black eye PR wise take twos had a black this. eye for some time because of a lot of their handlings this of, isn't this isn't of helping things. obviously this isn't helping things I mean and I, I obviously I understand you want to protect your IP you want to protect your uh, um, hard-earned uh, you know research and, and development and stuff you don't want to give out company secrets but I think a lot of this stuff is just Leaked character information. Well, th this stuff. Th his in his leaks in particular went a little bit deeper than he found the information. Um, his leaks were because he was scraping the thumbnail data from Twitch in essentially what was an exploit of their website. It was an exploit of Twitch. Yes. Of Twitch. Um, so they can get screenshots from a from stream to a, 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 a public beta, beta, or a beta tester. Right. Um, so there was a beta tester of Borderlands 3 who was streaming with other beta testers. Mm -hmm. They were discussing the game. They were talking about walkthroughs, th things like that. Now, uh, Submata, Submato, thank you, uh -huh. um, wasn't watching that stream. What he was doing was he wrote a script that would scrape Twitch's servers for the full resolution thumbnails 
of streams that are ongoing yes. because Twitch generates those thumbnails when you're streaming. And and as a streamer, yeah. when I'm done with a stream, I can choose between one of a hundred different full resolution right. thumbnails, apply that to my video and get you to click on it because, oh, that was something that was interesting in the video mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, I made a great face during yeah. this time or something like that. I do it on YouTube all the time with Talking Heads uh, videos where I'll, I'll go after the video is done and I'll choose a thumbnail. Okay. Um, the stream that he pulled these these thumbnails from were private streams. So it was an exploit that that Twitch has. Correct. It, it was something that he exploited but, on Twitch's site to gain access to information he was not privy to and was not public information. Um, and that's where the crux of this comes in at. Um, and then he posted that information publicly. Mm -hmm. Now. Is he subject to legal ramification? I don't think so. That's that's a. Is he subject to civil? Uh, I wouldn't even think of that either. That would be that would be a pretty hard stretch, and I don't even think Take Two would want to do that because the PR nightmare for that would be just nightmarish. I mean, even I remember back in the day when um, an early build of Half Life Two was leaked, and and uh, um, Valve was all up in arms about that because that's a big big. Uh, you know, security breach right there. And even then, when they found the person, I don't even think they arrested the guy. I think they just let the guy let the guy go with a warning, as far as I remember. I don't exactly remember what happened. But this is even less serious than that. This is just an exploit that I'm pretty sure is public knowledge right. on a Twitch. Right. And it's more Twitch's fault that they haven't fixed it. It's definitely Twitch's fault that they haven't fixed it. Yeah. Um, but just because an exploit exists doesn't mean you have rights to exploit it. Um, no, but it is a tool in someone's hat, and if they want to use it, they can use it. That's absolutely correct. Yes, yeah. So, um, but at using an exploit of a website for monetary gain, publishing this to YouTube and making monetary videos out of it, that's probably crossing some lines uh, somewhere I, I don't for think, information that's I don't not think, publicly available. I don't think that's any kind of legal ramifications because I mean, civilly certainly because because well, Take Two I, can claim losses on they, this. They they could, but I don't think they would have to be able to prove losses. Now, that would be pretty hard. <laughs> now, Take Two has said they are not seeking legal ramifications for right. this. They simply wanted to plug the leak. Yes. Um and and they wanted to find out how they exploited it and what was exploited and yeah. and again, this was a 10 month long investigation into not only Submato but into a, a couple of other right. people who were doing this yeah. this very similar thing. And I, I like if they framed it in that that way that like hey, we got these leaks and we want to find a way to stop these leaks. Mm -hmm. Right. I get that. Now, Submato has been subjected to some punishment from the services in which he was using. He has been banned from both Twitch and Discord. Mm -hmm. The reason being is he was obviously exploiting something on Twitch that shouldn't that have been exploited. That makes sense for the Twitch one. The and Discord likely, one, and likely breaking their terms of service as far as hacking goes. Um, Discord uh, banned him because it says your account was uh, involved in selling, promoting, or distributing cheats, hacks, or cracked accounts, which was not the case. However, he was dis uh, using Discord as essentially a paywall to get further screenshots and information. Yeah. So essentially selling information that he obtained not legally. Mm, I wouldn't necessarily ex not legally. I but would, I would say not legally because you're exploiting a website, bypassing authentication methods, which is improper use of a communication system. That is a felony. Mm, that that be, is be, a felony. It'd be hard to press, press to persecute. That now problem. again, whether or not you want to persecute it, but by the letter of the law, that is a felony. And especially taking that money or taking that that information and then selling it via Discord. Now I'm not selling you, hey, one dollar for a screenshot of Borderlands Three, right. but I am selling you access to that information. Right. And so, again, as as innocent as this kind of appears, this is felony level stuff. That this is exploiting a computer system for monetary gain. Mm. At the end of the day, that's exactly what this is. That's information wise, I guess. But right. I mean, but, okay, but but when you think of it like that, is it any different than than a news news organization putting a paywall up? Uh, yes, absolutely, it is because what if, what because, if they have? But if they have, uh, if they have, say, like a deep throat, uh, take uh, take two was not allowing this information to be out to outside of a couple select very uh, very few partners. This was not public information. Putting a paywall on. No, I understand that. But I mean, there's like whistleblowing laws and stuff. I'm not saying that, that Take Two is... This wasn't whistleblowing. No, no, no. I understand that. Right. But I'm just saying that going going by that type of reasoning and logic, you wouldn't ever have any whistleblowing type laws because there's people that are dispensing information that shouldn't be dispensed 
but they feel that it should go out for the public good. Now, obviously, screenshots for this is not for the public. Screenshots good. for a game is not for the public. Well, good. I understand that. And 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 again, it was specifically for for monetary gain. And you do not get whistleblower protection if you sell the information. That is a very distinct That's point true. of that law. That's true. So again, those are apples and oranges. But he wasn't specifically selling that. He was charging money for access to it, to, which is to the same thing. Access, access to the Discord server. Which is which had more information than he was releasing publicly on YouTube. Right. So it was access to more of this illegally but, obtained I mean, information. I understand that, but it's also the same thing as like, okay. I, I, I read the <laughs> Hacker Manifesto. I understand where you're coming no, from. No, I, okay. Right. okay. I understand. It's, it, it's a gray area is what it, I'm Information is just things. It's a gray area. It's... I think it's less of a gray area than you're selling it, and it's probably more of a gray area than I'm selling it. But then again, my a lot of my job is protecting private systems. No, I, and, and I understand that. And 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 rightfully, Take Two was upset that stuff got leaked and they didn't want to get leaked. Yep. And I I don't I don't blame them for that to be honest. But. Yep. Um. But yeah, so he did improperly access Twitch's service. He violated Twitch terms of service. He accessed content that he was not authorized to access. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's hacking, and it's illegal. Um, and he was reselling that information via an access grant because it was five dollars to access his Discord server. Mm -hmm. He was monetarily gaining from illegally obtained information, um, both of which are felonies. Uh, now, again, take two for their for their credit in all of this is probably handling this the right way. How did you get access to this? Yeah. What did you explore? Yeah, they want to. How long have you been doing it? Etc. Et which, which, et which is fine. Don't do it again, or we will throw the book at you because we have a book and we yeah. can throw it. Yeah. Um, but don't do it again. And so, for a lot of people who are crapping on Take Two, I actually stand fully by Take Two in this action. They didn't throw the book at the guy. They collected information where it was needed. They told him never to do it again because what you're doing is illegal. And and that's the end of it. But did the FBI raid the home of a YouTuber for leaking no, Borderlands soon? They're, they're, you're right. No. The very the very first no. headlines that came out were very sensationalized, and that's part of the problem too, is because sensationalism sells, obviously, right? right? And and that's that's also kind of part of the problem too that he has is he's like, okay, I have this groundbreaking, you know, news you have information to, to, you to, want to share. Yeah, you want to share, right? Right. How can I make money from this? Right. Well, that I mean, kind of makes sense, right? Sensationalism yep. sells. People want to know. So IGN reached out to, uh, or tried to reach out to Submoto, but strangely his Twitter and Discord servers were both down, so he was not available for public comment. Well, people don't use phones anymore. Yeah, exactly. There's no way to text them. I can't get a hold of them. I'm sorry. So so as many people who, who tried to get the uh, the Boycott Borderlands 3 twi uh, hashtag going and whatnot, yeah. let's calm down because at the end of the day... I it was not cool what he did. <laughs> I think there's more reason to boycott Borderlands Teams because it's going on the Epic Game Store. I would fully agree with that. <laughs> and, and and people were already pissed off with yeah. Take Two and yeah. Borderlands. And this story, which kind of slants towards like Hacker Manifesto kind of stuff, where well, right. we have a right to information. Right. I fully understand that mindset, but at the same time, if you're if you're Take Two and you've sunk millions of dollars into advertising and someone's giving it away for free a month early, yeah, that's money lost. Yeah, so. That's money well, lost on I, mm, does that mean, is money lost no, on advertising. Think, I don't think that's money lost Absolutely on advertising. Because these are super fans. The person that's willing to pay five bucks to get some early it was, glimpse of the game it was not, are people that are probably going to be buying the game anyway. It was not your voice. As a company, you're allowed to control your advertising voice. And if they're leaking that information one month early, not in the same way that you would that you would present it, that's a monetary loss. You'd have to be able to prove that it's a monster. That's that's the the reason why that's the reason why slander is such a hard, hard I, case to win because slander is uh, is involved with monetary loss. You in, have to be able to prove somebody said something against you that caused monetary loss. If they were going to unveil this at at a convention, if they were going to unveil Borderlands Three at right. at X convention at Epic yes. Games Con or right. you know what have you. You can say, well, we would have sold 15,000 tickets, but instead we only sold 12,500 because but that this information anything. was already public. How would they know? That this it doesn't unproven. matter. If they predicted they're going to sell 1,500, that's just a prediction. That's not provable. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. I think legally, they no. have a hard time prosecuting for 
monetary loss in this I, particular case. And again, I'm probably a little uh, bit more on this side, and you're probably more on that yeah, side. The okay. truth is probably somewhere in the I, middle. I don't know if we have any lawyers on. Right. Probably not. <laughs> but but I don't. leaked information prior to advertising can be considered a monetary loss because it's not the message that you intended to deliver. Now, once the information's out there, they can take with it and do what they will, right. but you have the right as a company to release information when you want to release that information. No, I mean, I don't disagree, and I understand why they're process when they're, mm -hmm. they're pursuing this to stop these leaks right but if someone were to if they were to take legal action and, and try to scream monetary loss they'd be hard pressed to mm -hmm. do that uh, is what I'm saying Alan says he's a lawyer yeah I, I get it I know he's I can I can tell by how he talks mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely a lawyer can't even spell his name right <laughs> <laughs> well that's how he gets recognized as a lawyer that's right Oh, you're that Alan. Oh, oh yeah. Alan the, the lawyer. the only Alan I know that doesn't spell his name right. <laughs> <laughs> surely just, he can just draft... Joke, a, just joking, Alan. Surely he can draft the documents to fix we it. We love you anyway. We love you, Alan. Yeah. I give you a hard time, but yeah. we love you. Honest. Uh, Jeff is correct. They can sue for it. Not a lawyer, but I have opinions, so that's roughly the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, this one was very interesting. Let me finish this beer and we'll dive into the next okay. one. Okay, all right. We're gonna get into more legal talk now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Neither one of us are Neither lawyers. one of us is qualified. Oh, we got, we got, this we're not qualified yeah, we're to talk not, about. No, not at all. You can, you, can, you can call us like unqualified uh, for these. But. I'm not a lawyer, but I did say at a Holiday Inn Express yeah. last night. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, but I, I do watch Law & Order once in a while. That's right. That qualifies. Actually, my, one of my favorite pastimes is watching legal discussions on YouTube. It's, it's oh, watching lawyers talk about. Yeah, there's there's legal one issues. huge channel where there's an actual lawyer who watches like depictations of lawyers yeah. on TV. And oh, like, that's okay. okay. Yeah, and he, he goes like, oh yeah, that would never happen, and that would happen. I think he did uh, Better Call Saul. I think Better Call Saul. His it was pretty good. How's that smell? Like ketchup. Uh oh. See, I. No, it's not that. I probably just got the mist. Maybe. I, I, I got like this burn and acid, and it smelled like ketchup. Well, we'll give it a shot. You can take the first sip, then. Here we go. Uh, Monkless Friars Festivus Belgian-style quad from Bend, Oregon, 10.2%. Just a reminder, when I went to Monkless the first time, they were very new, and I wasn't that impressed with it. Yep. Yeah. But. Uh, one you know, of my favorite YouTube channels um is uh lawful masses uh leonard french great depictions he's a copyright lawyer mm -hmm. uh i i love a lot of the discussions that happen on his channel okay um no, talk, that one, but... he talks a lot of uh of tech copyright he talked the fallout 76 fiasco mm -hmm. he actually set up a website for how to um uh request litigation against uh bethesda mm. was there even right oh not even close but it's okay <laughs> that's right you can have more ketchup beer. I don't think it smells like ketchup. It does smell like it's got some spices in it. No, no, no. Hold on. It smells like Arby's uh, Worcestershire sauce. Or Arby's. <laughs> like like their, their uh, horsey sauce? Yeah, their horsey sauce. It smells like Arby's horsey sauce. Uh, okay, I like... I, I hate to admit this on camera, but I actually kind of like Arby's and their horsey sauce. I, I do too. But I don't smell it I don't, I, I don't think I take a I'm getting this this weird vegetable acid like smell really I'm not getting that at all I'm, I'm, I'm getting like I'm getting like nutmeg and and cinnamon a little bit oh no I don't get any of that really that is freaking weird mm. we usually agree we do <laughs> we usually do we kind of have like the same Some, something is is overtaking all of that yeah I'm not getting nutmeg well it doesn't taste bad I wouldn't call it a very good Belgian y. The taste is better than the smell. Yeah, yeah. I find that with a lot of beers too. There's some that are just like. They stink. Like mostly farmhouses and mm -hmm. sours tend to smell like dirty socks mm -hmm. or dirty rags, but they taste pretty good. Jeff, do you watch the How to Drink YouTube channel? I freaking love Greg. Are you kidding me? Gosh, he is great. Aromas of lemon and dark fruit. And a complex flavor. I want to be Greg. And, yeah. he, and he started his channel uh, just about six months before I did. Yeah. Um, I, I started watching him, and he was actually kind of one of the inspirations to start a channel, because here's a guy who came out of nowhere and all of a sudden made it big. And uh, uh, I think when I started my YouTube channel, he had like 60,000 subscribers, but he had grown from zero to that in like six months. 
And I'm like, here's a guy who's producing fantastic content yeah. just like on the weekends. Now, a lot of his buddies produced commercials. So he probably had He already had the yeah. gear or can rent yeah, it yeah, or whatever yeah, else. Yeah, and yeah. so and the, 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 the expertise advice. And right. There, you know. um, but, uh, but no, he... I, I love... I freaking love Greg's channel. And I would love to do something with him sometime. But he's in New York. I'm in Oregon. Let's... We'll figure it out. We right will away, figure man. it out sometime. Right away. Yep. I need to go to New York. Hey, Greg, call me. Let's yeah. let's let's hook up. Let's do this. You've been you've been in New York before, right? I have not. Oh, that's a pretty fun town. Um, it's a it's a little town. It's I've talked to, I've talked about this a lot lately because we're we're in the process of moving. I've never gotten to travel really ever. No, really. Um, uh, Vegas twice and QuakeCon represents probably sixty to seventy percent of my commercial airfare. Hmm. So going to CES twice and then going to Dallas once for quite a so, so you just go to the cities that have the big giant conventions. Basically. That's basic. And you don't get to uh, see the city. You right. go to the conventions. Apparently yeah. we went to Seattle and we got yeah. to see the Seattle Convention Center. Yeah, Seattle's like a couple hours. I mean, everybody yeah. who lives Everyone. in, they've been to Seattle. Even drunk on a bet, you make it to Seattle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, but uh, uh, I think you, uh, I referenced one of his drinks. The Gordon's Cup is one of his drinks that I, uh, or one of the drinks that he introduced on his channel uh, that I, I made on my channel. Um, and I referenced him in the in the, the outro. Um, and I love that drink. That was a fantastic yeah. drink. Uh, gin, cucumber, little Oh, bit of yeah, wine. yeah, that's oh, right. We did so talk good. about that, yeah. And a little bit of a black yeah, pepper. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So good. Um, oh, wait, new studio and no Ultima map. Uh, did you watch the last episode in the old studio? Freaking did. Raul, you go watch that. So go last, watch episode eighty nine right now. One of the last things you took down was the old right now. <laughs> it was on the wall for you. You're the last thing I took down out of that studio. Yeah. <laughs> go watch it. Call me out, you son. Of <laughs> <laughs> Chinatown in New York is amazing. I think. I think Chinatown. Oh, they're, they're, they're talking about Chinatown in the chat. I think San Francisco was San pretty Francisco, amazing. Because I've been to both. Yeah. I like Chinatown San Francisco a little bit better. I, I went to Chinatown San Francisco. That was freaking amazing. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. But it's not here. Actually, it's up on the shelf up here. I think. It's either on the shelf or it's out in storage in the garage. But it's on one of my shelves. I, You know, I was thinking about that today. It's like, what, what do I have downstairs that I can I can bring to Chris and mm-hmm. the new studio here? Yeah. And I, I kind of kind of spaced it. Because I think yep. I have an Ultima map at home, too. Or it might be the... Uh, a map of um, well, it might be an Ultima map, but it wasn't because yours was from uh, Ultima Four. Ultima Four. I think yeah. mine was from Ultima Online. Okay, but still an Ultima map. Online. That Ultima wasn't even Online a term at Ultima Four. No, no, Ultima Online was one of the best online games ever. And then yeah. it was one of the first and one of the best. Uh, Raul says, "If we come to Chinatown, New York, I'll take you to my beer spot. That would be amazing." <laughs> It's in a it's in a back alley. Yeah, with lots of knives. Those have the best <laughs> beers, though. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Surprisingly, the most muggings and the most beers kind of coincide in the same place. Raul says he has Ultima Online in the box. I do too. Nice. I, I have mine in the box still. Yeah. I, still uh, I do box. have the Ultima Four box somewhere. I did take the map out of it, but I do have the box somewhere as well. Um. No, Chinatown, New York, would be freaking awesome. Uh, Jeff, if you go visit Raul, you won't come back alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, speaking of legalese, right. legal talk, yes. uh, there was an article posted uh, by Vice uh, that was Amazon is coaching cops how to obtain surveillance without a warrant from Ring video doorbells. Mm-hmm. Um, and this kind of caught some people by it. By surprise as well. Um, so basically it goes and says that uh, uh, police were able to log into Ring's website and geographically map everyone that has a Ring doorbell camera. Yes. And then just ad hoc view the footage from it. Now this wasn't necessarily the case because there's been that that was that that was the story that was when the first story broke. when it first broke, but that's not really necessarily the case. Correct. Yeah. Um, so that is absolutely not the case. Now the police are able to access without a warrant ring surveillance footage if you opt into that program. Yeah. If you register your ring at your physical address, show where it's pointing, 
and then give the police access to access. Yeah. Uh, give the police access to access. Yes, if, if, if you give them permission to access. Provide the police access via Ring servers access to your to your Ring camera. Footage, yeah, yeah, they can view they it can without view. a warrant because you've already granted them permission. Yeah, and that's fine. But if you haven't opted in to that program, and by the way, it is an opt-in program, then they can't access it without a warrant no. or without a, a request yeah, or a subpoena. They, and they can, they can come to you and they can ask you know, say, hey, you know, your, your neighbor got broken into. Can mm -hmm. we go look at the footage? You can totally say no. Right. But they can go get a subpoena and get the footage directly from Amazon if they want to. Correct. So I, I think that may be where the the outrage came from. But it's it, certainly not a warrantless search. No, no, it's not at all. Right. I mean, there's still, there's still compliance right. with the law. Right. This, um, is, this isn't some 1984 dystopian right, so, as, so, the, as the article made out to be. Right. So this article was posted to Motherboard via Vice. It's one of the Vice media sites. Um, and it was kind of like doom and gloom. Like the police are just looking at your ring doorbell cameras at, at, you know, at will yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Um, but uh, Engadget reposted the story and was kind of like, wow, this is kind of like shocking news. Yeah. And, and trying to, you know, be, be the stand-up journalist of integrity yeah, voice of you know, reason, yeah, reason yeah. but they're like this is concerning if this is true uh yesterday a ring spokesperson quote from engadget a ring spokesperson contacted engadget to clarify that law enforcement agents are not given access to individual cameras the company instead submits requests to owners of a given area quote when an investigation uh uh, investigating when, an when, inve when investigating an active case, end quote, and footage is handed over only when user consent is granted. Ring also denies that police access footage with uh, uh, that police can access footage within 60 days. Ring will not release customer information in response to government demands without a valid and binding legal demand properly served on us. So unless yeah. they receive a court yeah. order, a subpoena, or right. a warrant, they are not just willy nilly turning over yeah. access to cameras to police. Yeah. So, this is a story that kind of broke and was very, very quickly hushed, yeah. because it was sensationalized and yes, and and nineteen eighty four ish. Yes, and then all of a sudden it was like, well, no, that's not how it works at all. Yeah. So I don't know where Vice was getting their information from, but well, I mean, like like I was saying, sensationalism sells. It so totally, you, the, the, it got the, clicks. The, the biggest, yeah. They they got re re commented by Amazon or uh, by by Engadget. Oh yeah, well that's the that's the thing is like you get, you know, even if it's even if the outlandish headline gives you a ton of clicks at the beginning, if you have to go back a day later and retract it, it's still worth it because they got all that initial traffic. Uh, Shifty Wolf, pay attention to me. Hello. Okay. There you there go. There you go. All right. Are you guys alcoholics? <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> we're alkaline holics. We like alkalines. I do like alkalines. And alkalines are. I, I like a good base. Yeah, <laughs> it's solid base. Yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a little vodka. Mm. I don't know what to think about this beer. It I don't know what to think about it. Help me understand this beer, Steve. This tastes like. Christmas beer, to me. Yes, they tried to put spice in there. Mm -hmm. uh, what what I think? Well, because I mean, it does say Festivus, which which, right? You know, it's probably a Christmas probably beer. a Christmas beer, winter beer. Uh, it seems to me they tried to make a quad, didn't turn out like they liked. Added spices to it and called it a Christmas beer. That makes Cause, sense because because the the Belgian -y part of this does not stand out. No. Nope. The spices that they put in here does. So all that overpowers it. So it kind of makes me think that it's maybe they, they screwed up or maybe they, they were meaning this to be a Christmas beer and just the spices came through too much and was just like, eh, we'll just go with it. But I, yeah, I wouldn't consider this a very good beer. I mean, it's okay. I love watching the hammer swing. It's great. Oh, we got some more, it's huh? It's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love my mods. I really do. They are freaking on the ball. They're good. Yep. Uh, I'm I'm not getting those holiday spices. I'm tasting what could be some spice, but I'm not interpreting that way. Like I said, I'm interpreting like horseradish sauce. 
I don't know where you're getting that. And and uh, I know you don't, but that's like I've I've been sitting here for the last ten minutes yeah. thinking about this beer. That could be what it is. Maybe because of the initial olfactory senses hit you, and then that's what your brain is constantly thinking. And so that's what your brain's telling you that's what it is. And I didn't get it, so I'm not getting it. Like, it's certainly sweetened up for me a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not getting nutmeg or cinnamon or allspice or anyth anything like I'm that. Get, I'm definitely getting those. This tastes like a heavily spiced, Christmas spiced beer. Yeah. Mal malt spices, I should say. Yeah. Um, it is a little malty, and I'm starting to taste a little bit of, like, maybe a roastiness to yeah. it. You know, so I, I am getting some of the yeah, elements. Switch glasses. Yeah, maybe that glass was, was coated in, in horseradish before <laughs> drinking it. The first two beers were fine. We totally agreed about the first two. Yeah, we did. That's true. Right. And what's on the monitor in the background? Lcars47.com. Yeah. Look at that. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of... I don't know. Hmm? And, and I'm still smelling it. I, 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 I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Hold you're, on. You're gonna try, go ahead. Smell yours. Okay. Do you think... Do you Smell think, yours. Okay. Mine has a head on it. Smell mine. They are a different smell. Okay, it is different. They are completely different. This one is... is. I wouldn't say it's so different that they're completely foreign. This one's more subdued, and it could be because of the head on it. But I'm still not getting, like, horseradish or anything. Right. That is definitely, definitely different. But this is, this is not unprecedented. I've had beers before... Where yours is a little sharper. I smell a little bit more alcohol, yeah. and and again, a little bit subdued because of the head, and I expect that. Um, but I am getting a little bit of a sweetness on more yours. Yeah. I'm not getting that on mine. Hmm. And I've had the head on mine the whole time, and that might be the difference because you you taste with your nose first. You do. And and as I'm getting way different flavors on the nose, I'm tasting way different flavors too. Yeah. This is probably a great. A great video for John to experiment with. Yeah. You know, what's the difference of a head on a beer versus a flat well, we, we Oh, that would be interesting. We did... Because we the experience did, is very was, different. There was one beer... Did you mind if did. I... Yeah, go for it. We did do a beer once uh, on John's channel. If anybody wants to go to John's channel, it's Hops and Brews. Uh, and there was one the beer on there. is different. Yeah, it was... There was one beer. It was a really big beer. It was like... Um, I think it was a 19% beer by the brewery. It was Chocolate Rain or something like that. It was like themed after that. But it was such a big beer. And I think there was like some sediment that was going on because we literally poured three different glasses for three different people. Yeah. And all three of us were getting yeah. different notes from this thing. And we think it was because it was just the order in which it was poured. Yeah. And there's probably some sediment and some layers and stuff like that. that and especially on. with some of the aged stuff that's maybe been aged yeah. a little longer yeah. than it should have been. And, and we thought that, okay, this is, you know, different opinions. Right. But then we end up switching glasses and stuff like that. And we're like, oh, no, you're totally right. John and I did a video. Uh, I've done two videos over on Hops and Brews, which you should totally subscribe if you haven't yeah. because it's a flipping amazing beer channel. Um, I've done two videos with John over on Hops and Brews. And... Uh, uh, we did a beer cocktail, which was an amazingly fun video mm -hmm. um, and uh, and really a great experience. Um, we also did a, was it a Firestone Walker um, that was like a 2015 uh, or something like mm -hmm. that? So it was a very, very well-aged uh, ESB, I think yeah. it was. Um, and it had turned. It, it had gone beyond kind of the point. It, it had soured uh, that what what should have been like this this roasty malty caramely mm -hmm, kind mm -hmm. of thing it goes back. had turned into like this yeasty sharp bitter. Mm -hmm. I, and that's happened before. I've right. seen that happen before. And, and so John and I were very disappointed in that beer, but but that kind of explains what what I'm having here because this is a 2018 beer, um, it, so it has been aging Aged a little for, bit yeah. for probably a year to a year and yeah. a half. Um, and I poured mine first, and and like I said, my head is not going down, and Steve's is completely. And in fact, there's a color difference too. Almost, yeah. Mine is significantly darker. Darker, yeah. Mine significantly is, yeah. darker, yeah. and so. Yeah, and it could be it could because like after a while things start to settle. Right. Things rise to the top. Here, things sink down. Try mine. The okay. flavor is different. Even. This is interesting. I didn't expect to get into something like this tonight. It's a it's a creamier, smoother flavor. Yes, I want to say it is slightly different. Um, the same, and uh, but uh, like I said, I'm getting different stuff on the nose, which is causing me to interpret the whole flavor profile differently. 
Yours does seem to be more malt forward than mine. Way more malt forward. I, it could be that whatever they use to spice this settled mm -hmm. to the bottom. Right. And since you poured mine second, I could be getting more on that. In fact, I think you can see a little bit yeah. of sediment just right there. Absolutely. And that looks like some kind of spice sediment. Right. And, but like I said, Steve's nose is a little bit sweeter yeah. uh, than mine is. Mine is a little bit more, I, I want to call it acidic. Yeah. And maybe that's the difference. And that could be. And, and we're you, both right. But, but you don't want to shake your beard either. No. <laughs> you tell me before you pour it. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to sit there and yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. <coughs> All right, that was some... <laughs> uh, ABK9000, if he's boring, why the f*** are you watching? Yeah, That's exactly. a great question. Good, good point. <laughs> That's on you at that point. Mm -hmm. Totally on you. All right, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of other news to get to. Let's see if we can get to it in the next 25 minutes. Let's do it. Uh, Facebook shuts down the infamous Raid Area 51 group. Yes. I <laughs> don't raid Area Fifty One. Yeah, well, okay. I don't think anybody. Okay, it's a meme, right? It was a big. It was a big meme. Well, it was a, an official group in a meetup location well, and a I, date I, and a time. I, I understand that, but did anybody really take it seriously? Did I think there's really take it seriously. There's always that one jackass in the group. Well, of course, there, there, there's probably like, oh yeah, let's do it. Let's totally do yeah, this. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, even the guy who founded the thing was like, I did this as a joke, right? right? It's like, okay. Um, I, I do love the the response though that it warranted because the the gist of the joke was they can stop one of us but they can't, can't stop, stop us all. all yeah and the air force basically responded yes, yes we, we can. can yeah we can. <laughs> and I was like and, and they're they're probably laughing with it too it's like yeah you're probably but we're the, never gonna do it the thing that astounded me was there were people that were outraged that the U S is gonna fire on its own citizens for oh. demanding access to information you're raiding a military installation mm. what the hell did you think mm -hmm. was gonna happen. You're yeah. going to be shot on sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I, and I think it's like, I, I didn't think anybody ever took it that serious. I, right. I, I don't think so. And it generated a lot of funny the, memes and stuff that were out there. No, there were legitimately some threads on Reddit in some major, like, like not like the deep hidden stuff, like, like the, like, you know, the, I don't know what to call them. Uh, the conspiracy theorists. Oh, right, right. The anger conspiracy right. theorists. Right. No, yeah. this was like in, in our news. It was yeah. like, I can't believe the U.S. would consider shooting on American citizens for just asking for access information. You're walking through a restricted military zone. Yeah. I don't care what country or what nationality you're from. Yeah. You're, going you're going to going be to shot on sight. Yeah, you're going to get nailed. Yeah. You won't even hear it, hear it coming. Yeah. You're just going to drop. Yeah. And then about six well, seconds yeah. later, you're going to hear you, the gunshot. You, you think some top secret military base doesn't have some toxic top secret weaponry? That's right. Gonna, like, they probably got the brown note weapon. You're going to be shitting your pants all night. <laughs> <laughs> they got the brown note and a rail gun yeah, pointed exactly, your direction. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> shooting double A batteries at your ass all day long. But, but yeah, seriously. Um, don't raid Area 51. Yeah, don't. But anyway, Facebook actually got to the point where they had to ban the group. Yeah. Uh, where this is no longer a group. This is no longer an event that's happening yeah. on Facebook. Don't raid Area 51. Good Lord, don't raid Area 51. Yeah, don't do that. I like my viewers alive. Yeah, yeah. You bring me AdSense money only if make, you watch make, my videos. Make all the jokes you want about raiding Area 51. That's fine. Right. I, I like... I like uh, how the, the video of the guy who founded it, he's got a Naruto thing on. It's like, how could you take this guy seriously? He's got a he's got a little Naruto headband. Right. You can't take him seriously. He demonstrated the run. Yeah, you can't you can't take this seriously. On ABC. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys want to know how we can get there so fast? We can Naruto run. Yeah, yeah, we got that. It's more aerodynamic, guys. That's right. I did like the video of the people practicing for the Area 51 raid where they're all in the room running. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, just run with your arms behind you. You're more That's aerodynamic right. that way. Yeah. So, don't raid Area 51. It's not good for your health. No. And I like all my viewers alive. If you're dead and you're a ghost, feel free. Yeah. Yeah, go, go ahead on the ethereal plane. Yep. Go to Area 51 all you want. Totally. But not right now. Totally. All right, viewer discretion advised a little bit in the next the next article. Yeah. I will say yeah. there are some obscene gestures in this article, yeah. but it was the best article that I could find for the preceding content. Yes. I do not uh, verify, endorse, or stand by. Well, I do verify, but yeah, I, don't endorse, yeah. I don't endorse the content that's in this article. Yeah. Okay, just so we're clear, there, there is some... Uh, 
Obscene gestures. That's it. That's all. Obscene gestures. That's all I gotta say. There you go. Some creative sign language. Yes, creative sign language. Yeah. Uh, not ASL approved, by the way. Yeah. This is not the the correct uh, definition of Merry Christmas. Mm. Uh, so there was a uh, an announcement of a game at uh, in China, uh, essentially an open world RPG mm-hmm. that shares some very familiar elements. Yeah, it's very strikingly similar. With, very very striking style. With uh, with a very well known game called Breath of the Wild. <clears throat> now, if this was some no name publisher, this probably wouldn't have been a big deal. But yeah. this was a major announcement. Yeah. Um, so this was a Chinese developed RPG uh, by China Joy uh, at the China Joy Gaming Expo. Um, and what was the name of the game? Genshin, Genshin Impact. Impact. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, you, you can put the screen up. It was met with a fair amount of protest because yeah. it's essentially a carbon copy of Breath of the Wild. Artistically speaking, artistically almost like gameplay it's elements. Like obviously, it ripped it off. Obviously, right. it ripped it off. Yeah. And there's one thing to be inspired by a game. There's another thing to just blatantly copy it. Mm-hmm. And I think this starts to fade that line. It, it's starting to blur bit. that line. Definitely. Right. Um, um, I, I've seen a number of gaming projects that are obviously inspired by oh yeah. other games. Yeah, I mean, as soon as one type of game is successful, people are going to start copying. I mean, like, as soon as Minecraft became extremely successful, there were a million of voxel-type clone games yes. that came out because of it. So that's understandable. But this, is, this isn't this is like an indie developer. This is a no. major developer. Yeah. Um, Publishing to PS4. To correct. Be, yeah. So, it became a pretty popular meme at the China Joy Expo to take out your Switch or your copy of uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, scroll down just mm-hmm. a little bit, mm-hmm. and hold it up and flip off the camera. Yep. Uh, and flip off uh, uh, Genshin Impact. Uh, this happened again and again and again. And again, yep. And again and again. And this was in China, so there's a lot of Chinese people. Right. right. There's going to be a lot of people right. flipping off. Now, now the most uh, showy de- demonstration, I will say, was when a guy took out his PS4 and smashed it with a hammer. Yep, that's right. Uh, in, in protest, saying, I will never buy this game, and how dare Sony endorse this game? Yep. Because it is a blatant ripoff. Uh, and honestly, I... I do totally see where they're coming from. Now, uh, does Nintendo have a leg to stand on when saying that they can't poke? No, uh, obviously, because there's enough differences to say that it could be inspired by... This is a close one. This is closer than I think you're going to land. Well, okay. Which is kind of where we land legally anyway. Yeah, let's 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 uh, let's take a look. We got the screenshot here. Yeah, you got here the screenshots there. That has the, the differences. And obviously, art style, very, very similar. Very similar. Very, very similar. But different enough. Like, this very this last one, there's a boss enemy. Okay, See, that one's the like, most similar to me. You think so? Yeah. No. Okay, we have we have a four-legged something-something on the Zelda side, and over here we got some bipedal, but they both have, like, segmented limbs. They both have the one eye. I get it. Very, very similar artistically. With nearly identical art styles. And, With and, nearly and identical art problem. styles. But art style is not... You can't copyright that stuff. You can't copyright art style. You cannot copyright gameplay mechanics. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that's not copyrightable. No. Um, But what you can do is the overall uh, visual and and presentation of a game. I think... I think... Well, I I mean, this is... And uh, potentially story. Because we we don't know the story uh, of of Russian. Yeah, we we don't know. We don't know. Uh, but also, this is in China. Well, so you, you wo- well you woke up after a thousand years, and and you have a a smartphone, it's not a so, tablet, yeah. <laughs> and and you need to roam the world. And there's a you don't have a sword, you have a scimitar. And 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 there's an empress who <laughs> desperately needs your help because she's been battling the s- say no, I can't say sage. Uh, she's been battling Gurun. the spirits, uh, Gurun, yeah. for for the last thousand yeah. years, and and they're waiting for the sacred champion to yeah, awaken. Yeah, you know, yeah. we don't know the story. Yeah. Um, if it's like that, there might be a leg to maybe, stand on maybe, here because 
You well, what you can't do is you can't say they copied the gameplay mechanics, or they copied yeah. the art style, or they copied the story, yeah. or they copied the platform, or oh, they copied yeah. the control. Yeah, it's, but what you can say is they copied it all together. Yeah. And, and that's going to be Nintendo's leg to stand on if this, in fact, turns into something that Nintendo yeah. wants to wage war about. Right. I, I don't think that they will, because it's, I mean, obviously, I don't know what... You, you don't think we're... Nintendo's legal department isn't chopping up Okay, again? we don't know. If you think we're experts in the U.S. legal system, we are far from being any experts in the Chinese. Yeah, we have no idea. Okay, we're just blowing spitballs in the wind right now at this point. What I can tell you is Nintendo's legal department probably is not happy right no, now. No, they probably are not, and they're probably looking at ways of maybe squashing this. Probably. Right. But given how much rip-off crap that comes out of China, probably not much is going to happen. Right. But the, the, the flipping off of it is probably the most that's going to occur. But it was interesting that in China, there were people protesting this. Yeah. By smashing their PS4s. And yeah. flipping off the camera. Some, somebody, somebody had enough money to just go smash their PS4s. Right. right. And, and like I said, if anyone's going to fight this, it's probably going to be Nintendo. Yeah. And, and just from a cursory standpoint, I see enough here that might say, hey, we might have something here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but we might. Um, I don't know why that page isn't loading. I'll try to refresh it. If it doesn't load, that's terribly fine. It's the oh, Warner okay. Brothers side. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not, it's not loading up. Okay. Uh, the Matrix is returning to theaters after 20 years. Yeah. It's been 20 years. I know. It's been 20 years. It's, it's, it started out really popular. It was, it was groundbreaking theater. Uh, groundbreaking visual groundbreaking effects visual and storytelling. Effects. Yes. Yes. It was something that most people have not seen before. Immediately it was parodied and then became blasé. And that's circling back to be like, oh. It's cool again. It's cool again. Yeah, right. That's cool again. Yeah. Right. Because like everybody did the rip off, stop motion, circle round. It was bullet like time, bullet time looking thing. Right. Um, Which I will say, I'll I'll give credit to Max Payne first, the video game for doing like bullet time style. Because I think Max Payne the video game came before I don't know the if Matrix. It did. You know, it's kind of hard. It was ninety nine. Yeah. It was right in that ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine time definitely. frame. Definitely. Yeah. Because I, I mean, don't know, they'd be interesting to look. Well, because well it's so when close. did GTA three come out? GTA, Actually, let's GTA just three didn't have bullet time. No, it didn't. But it was based on the same engine. It was Rockstar. Oh, okay. Uh, but no, Max Payne three is after that. No, after Max Payne one. Yeah. Max Payne one did the, the the first bullet time mechanics. Yeah. That was two thousand one. Two thousand one. That was so after that was the after, Matrix. That was after okay. The Matrix, so yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I wasn't sure exactly that time window. I knew it was around what the same came time, first, yeah. but it was chicken or the egg kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Matrix came before Pan. Yep. Yeah, because yeah, Matrix was nineteen ninety nine. So yeah, it, it really. Uh, and Keanu Reeves has an ha- answer today. Yeah, well, he still looks the same. That's right. Well, he's got a beard now, so you know he has to do something to keep Thro- up keep up his appearances. Of, Throw uh, Van Helsing off his trail. Right. Yeah, he doesn't want anybody to know that he's really a vampire. Um, but uh, uh, yes, yeah, so he grew a beard. <laughs> But but no, it really was like that type of style, mm-hmm. the stop motion spin around type of a thing. Right. Very, very groundbreaking. Anyway, the Shasta Matrix Brothers right. is their best movie, and so far it's their only best movie. <laughs> God, come on. Have, have, well, they, they're really, not, well, have they're, they really put anything better than that? No. No. No, no. they haven't. Yeah. They 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 pulled a George Lucas where they introduced the world to the best story, and when they got a bigger budget, they sucked at it. Yes, exactly. And Matrix two and three came out, it was like I wish they made sequels. Where where was the good movie? I right. Like, oh, yeah. I the the story is okay. They became too reliant on CGI, and CGI wasn't evolved enough to no. the point where yeah. they could do that. The, Whereas the, the Matrix One relied a lot on practical effects, and and, they, and we say this, some, they had some really good blend of CGI with practical effects. Right. Um. Yeah. <laughs> but but there are scenes within the Matrix two and three. Especially the, the entire scenes are CGI. The, they the, never shot the them. The big fight scene with all the agents. All the Smiths. Smiths. Terrible. Horrible. It was looking. terrible then. Horrible looking. You watch it now and you'd be like cringing like crazy. Like oh this is not good. Yeah, it was terrible then. There's, Meanwhile, the practical effects from the first Matrix still hold up today. Yeah. Even the visual effects from the first Matrix. Hold the up only today. thing that's gonna be like a hard sell is the reliance on payphones. Be like, oh, what's a payphone? But again, you can put yourself into the into the mindset that it was 1999. It was the world as we knew it at its peak. 
Okay, and yeah. so based on that storyline, you can say but the like, world is but like, like parents who now have kids. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I love this movie. It came out. I'm gonna take right. it. Daddy, what's a payphone? <laughs> I still want my Nokia sh- <laughs> phone. Yeah. That's what I'm waiting on. Yeah. I never had one of the the Nokia Matrix phones. I wanted mm-hmm. one so bad. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was a really good groundbreaking movie. So as time. a teenager, I went out and I bought a Palm Trio. Oh, because of that movie? Yeah. It, uh, I, I started with a uh, with a handspring visor. Yep. Um, bought, bought that well into my mid-teens. <laughs> well, not well in. Well, got, got, well, got, got a lot of use out of like, it. Though, in my mid-teens, I bought a handspring visor. That was, you know, I, I had a gaming computer and I had a handspring visor. And uh, and then as soon as I got out on my own, I bought a a, a Palm Trio as soon as it was as it was released. I bought yeah. one in two thousand six. This question of will it be in four K now it does not say. Yeah, um, I'm sure there will be some digital enhancements. I'm there, sure there will be. There is. I, I know that there's a Blu-ray release, so at least they have a 1080p version. Right. Uh, whether they have a four K version, I do not know. It was shot on film. So yeah, it could it upscales pretty good. Right. At that point yeah. Um, there, there's going to be this weird dichotomy of stuff that you can you can upsample stuff that was shot in the late '90s, early 2000s. You're not going to be able to upshoot or up up convert things that were shot between 2004 and 2012, and then you're going to be able to up convert again. Yeah. Um, because the digital technology wasn't there. It was there to produce a movie and to get good quality out right. of it, but the resolution wasn't there wasn't to support great, it. Yeah. And because so, the resolution of the time didn't need to be that high. Right. Because no one would display and, it. And so a lot of videos were shot at 960 and 1080p, and that's all they're ever going to have. Uh, they weren't shot at 8K with, with red cinema cameras, with right. red weapons and things like that. Um, so, yeah, but, but if it was shot on film and the digital processing was done at that level... You could totally up convert that yeah. to 4K. Oh yeah, totally. So, all right. So we learned about Max Payne. Yep. Uh, what's your favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, of all time or recently? Let's do both. Okay. Right now, I don't eat that much breakfast cereal. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I'm I'm more of like just give me a cup of coffee. I'll be good. Uh, but I, I usually do like Saturday mornings. I'll wake up Saturday and I'll have to, I'll have a bowl of cereal. Um, you know, the adult in me would like to say, like, brand something or other, but no. I, I actually kind of like the Reese's Peanut Butter Puff cereal. Now. That one's okay. I don't think it even cracks my top five. Really? Yeah. I, I kind of like that one. Um, I was going to say of all time, gosh, it'd be kind of hard because there's a lot of good ones out there. There used to be Cracklin' Oats or something like that. And yeah. Kinda had like, you kind of had, like, had a coconutty... Flavor. It had like these O's, crackling O's, crackling O's, crackling O's. Yeah, yeah. those are good. Love the, the, that cereal. The, the gram with yes. uh, yeah, can't find those anymore. Very good. I love that cereal. Ooh. Yeah, there's still honey O's. You can still get the no. This is this was but, different but than no, this, this, this had the the, the, the the crispy crunchy thing. Yes, and it kind of had almost a coconutty flavor, yeah. crispy coconut flavor. Oh, yeah, so good. Those were good. Yeah. Um, so I was a weird kid. I really liked growing up Raisin Bran and Frosted Mini Wheats. And, mm-hmm. I liked Frosted Mini Wheats too. As a kid. I mean, I totally did. Yeah. But I wasn't like the super sugary cereal. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my all-time favorites, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yes. Obviously. Yeah, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, banana Nut Crunch. Oh, yeah. yeah that's yeah, number that's okay. one. No, you think that's number Freaking one? Freaking okay. love Banana Nut Crunch. Yeah. I wish it wasn't like $3 a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> because it is. Yeah. But it's only four seventy nine a box. I know it's three dollars a bowl. Have you seen the box it comes in? Yeah, there's not, there's much, not in much in there. there. Yeah, and they pack it like Lay's potato chips. Yeah. So, but no, uh, those are my favorite breakfast cereals. This one, I doubt it's going to crack my top ten. Probably, Probably won't not, even yeah. crack top fifty. No. Rick and Morty is getting an official breakfast cereal. Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick. A Pickle Rick breakfast cereal. Pickle Rick. Although they did say that it's not going to be pickle flavored. Just I'm pickle colored. I'm real, really thankful for that because I was honestly worried. Yeah, yeah. You know, I when I thought article. this, I thought this was like okay, because obviously this isn't, this isn't going to be a cereal you can go to your Safeway, your Vons, your Piggly Wiggly, whatever region of the right. country you go to. You're not going to be able to buy this cereal from there. Uh, this is only from the uh, Funko store. You can get it from there, and it's a commemorative cereal. And it's basically 15 bucks a box. So yeah. You have to be a really, really, really big Rick and Morty fan to want to get 
Yeah. Uh, and you're probably not even going to eat it. You're probably just going to like set the box there. And honestly, they missed the most direct tie-in. Make it eye holes. Yeah, the eye holes. We know eye, eye holes is a cereal. Give us eye holes. <laughs> I'm the eye hole man. <laughs> that's not that's not as uh, popular as Pickle Rick, though. Pickle Rick's popular, but he's no breakfast cereal. No, that's true. But if they're going to be like, okay, I got to make a Give me Pickle though, Rick Dill Pickles. That would be better. I mean, give me the tie-in. Yeah. This is just, you know, Cheerios that have been colored green. Give <laughs> this, me eye holes. This, this is what it looks like. It looks like the, this Cheerios that are just dyed green. Right. It's probably so, like just the most bland, sugary grain yep. cereal you can think of. Uh, Pickle Rick cereal is made up of bright green multi-grain rings. It features Pickle Rick in all of his glory with a spoon in hand, which is probably the pose you should be mimicking right about now. Sadly, or thankfully, the cereal isn't pickle flavored. End quote. So yeah, uh, Pickle Rick O's coming to uh, an FYI near you. Or not near you, since most of them are out of business. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know that's big news. It's not big yep. news, but yeah, whatever. Interesting. All right, we saved Star Trek for the end. Are you happy? We didn't get into it early. <laughs> yeah. It's for the end, uh, and it's small news, but it's small news, but it's, it's, it's interesting. But it's noteworthy. Uh, yeah. Star Trek Picard, the series, is getting a series of prequel novels and comic books. Yeah, uh, that will tell the story of the twenty years leading up to Star Trek Picard. And and honestly, I think the producers of this had enough forethought to know this is going to be big, mm -hmm. which. Are pretty correct. I mean, uh -huh. there's way more original or uh, next generation fans than any other Star Trek series. It it hurts, but it's, it's true. But right? you're right. You're right. It's true. There's there's that's the most appealing. You cut me deep to, just now. Yeah, I'm sorry. You cut me deep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we can soothe it later. It's fine. We'll, we'll we'll polish that cut with whiskey later. All right. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, they they were going to do some prequel novels. Actually, I think the novel is going to be afterwards in the comics of the prequel. But I, I, I maybe I read the article. Yeah. Wrong. But yeah, they're going to do some some tie-ins to it with a novel and some comic books, which is smart because that's going to add extra sales to it. Mm -hmm. um, my only concern, really, with these type of things, and I've seen this before with some movies where. If you really want the full story of what's going on, you have to read the comic books. You have to read these books. Oh. And I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to be able to watch the series as a whole. I think you're going to be able to. because and, uh, and, and then read the comic books as like an additive thing. Yeah, I like as an this. addendum. Yeah, as an addendum. Not necessarily I need to read this to understand this. Right. Um, Rhett and I talked about this a couple weeks ago. That uh, there was an Engadget article... That said, we think you're going to need to be a Star Trek Next Generation super fan to understand Picard. Right. And I don't agree with that. I, I, think I don't think that's necessarily true. You didn't have to read the Game of Thrones books to understand Game of Thrones. You didn't have to read Harry Potter to understand Harry Potter. And yes, while the books can lend a whole lot more nuance, and I'm sure if you're a Next Generation DS9 and Voyager fan, you're going to get a lot more out of the series. Right. But... These people are smart. They're not going to do just fan service throughout the whole thing and make you be this super high-level nerd to understand the basic premise of the story. Right. You're going to understand in the introduction in the first five minutes of 7 and 9 that she used to be a Borg and she traveled home with Voyager and now she's here and this is what she does now. How can I help you, sir? Right. You know, they're not stupid. Um, they'll probably have some exposition in there just to kind of... Like, I'm sure they will. They'll, they'll have to. You know, th there'll be a, a you know... Picard writing in his journal instead of a captain's log, and and it'll be you know, uh, uh, you know we're we're on our way to the Angolas cluster, and I heard there might be someone there who can help us with, right. with you know with some with some relevant experience in the issues we're facing. Yeah, yeah. And 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 it fades to him you know pouring his whiskey, and and Seven goes, "What the hell are you doing here, Picard? Trying yeah, yeah, to save yeah. the galaxy?" Like that could totally that be can totally work. Yeah, the exact totally work. exposition that yeah. they give. Yeah. And as long as they give enough exposition to, to make the audience members know, I think for longtime fans it may be a little annoying, but understandable. They're yeah. gonna have to reintroduce things, but I don't Ryan, I don't mind introducing after twenty years. Yeah. You know, because you're bringing in old fans as well as new fans alike. So, um, I do appreciate though that they're not ignoring <laughs> the longtime fans yeah. because that's another worry that a lot of people have is this is just gonna be a 
a, a 24 or a Game of Thrones where they throw the books out the window and they just go, we're just going to yeah. care about the HBO series. Right, right, right. They're, they're including the longtime fans while making it approachable for new for, for, right. for new introductions. I hope so. And I think maybe what a lot I of people... Hope. I hope so. I and, hope and so. I know, well, who owns who owns the Star Trek IP? Is Paramount. It still Paramount's Paramount. Still? Paramount's always Paramount owned it. CBS. Okay, so yeah. they've still they've always owned it. And they still own it. And I think all of what happened with Star Wars because Star Wars also had a big um, novel and comic book uh, that was considered canon, right? They had right. a lot of comic book stuff and a lot of book stuff that Lucas Arts blessed as canon, right? But as soon as like Disney took over, that was like, eh, you know, we can just disregard this type of yep. thing. Yep, the whole EU. Yeah, that whole thing, just like, eh, whatever. That's that's that didn't happen. Um, so with them expanding this, I don't know. There were Star Trek comic books and there were Star Trek uh, novels and stuff like that. Hey, too. hey, Reverend, go ahead and ban him. That that's a bannable comment. Good lord. All right, I'm heading out now. Worst part of the show: long live Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nice knowing you, Wolf. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. Kinda. <laughs> Love you. No, yeah, yo, yeah, you yeah, don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking die out. I <laughs> uh, got put in time out for 300 seconds. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to yeah. all of you. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, everything that I'm hearing about Picard has been the right thing. I hope so. Um, I mean, after... I don't know if you've watched the Discovery. Star Trek Discovery. I tried. Uh, yeah. it Like, that made me really discouraged about Picard. Uh, if they try to make it for mass appeal, it's going to fail. Yes. Oh, there's a hacker and he's exploiting a sequel. You did the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, Discovery? Yeah. Sequel still exists in 2200 years. I'm going to kill myself <laughs> long before that. Yeah, yeah. No, Discovery was not great. Second season was even even worse than the first one. Right. Um, but uh, well, and it's because they knew they were failing, so they introduced Spock and Pike to get some like street some cred. I have to say. Not not distinct, but but the second season of Discovery, Pike was a very good character, right? And I kind of like that they introduced him, and in the parts that they let him as a character shine, he did shine pretty good. But he was not a major part of of the storyline. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. Galaxy Quest is the best Star Trek movie. Uh, it's way up there. It's pretty good. There was a time in my life I said that. Well. I would say that the Orville is the best current Star Trek series right now. Absolutely, it yeah. is. Um, there was a time in my life I would say Galaxy Quest was the best Star Trek movie ever made. I think 2009 Star Trek exceeds that. I think. I think. Now, honestly... I, I am still a big fan. First uh, Contact is freaking amazing. I, I still think, in my honest opinion, mm -hmm. the best Star Trek movie, Wrath of Khan. No. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep, nope. it was great. It had it had not only did it have throwbacks to the original series. It does, and and the original actor. Too. It Remember does. Carlo Montepano is the original one, and it also had some great character development with with Kirk and Spock. Yes, and their relationship. Yes, it also had great action scenes, great space battles. That was like where they had to go to the nebula and behind there, and there's some strategic things going on with them fighting each other, and they won in the end because Spock sacked. It was a great movie all around. A great, good space science fiction opera with good characters in it and a good storyline that threw back to fans. So it was a perfect Star Trek movie. Nemesis is the best Star Trek movie. No, no, no. I put him in timeout. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you go sit in the corner yeah. and think about what you did. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I like some of the Next Generation ones, too. They were good. First Contact was amazing, yeah. and everything else kind of fell short. Yes. Generations was short. Uh, and uh, First Contact was good. It, it, first Contact was good. It was, it was very reminiscent of Star Trek for the, re the Return Home. Was it the one where they Voyage went? Home. Yeah, the Voyage Home. Star Trek IV. Yeah, the one where they went back in time. Yes. Because there was some 
light humor to it and yes. stuff like that and they played off of the characters really well which sweet they, Jesus yeah, yeah they, they did that with Deanna with getting contact. drunk yeah they had um, some really great stuff with that I, I watched a documentary on First Contact the other day where Marina Sirtis was talking about Troy and how she's tried to make Troy a humorous character in the right. past and Marina Sirtis is honestly a very funny person mm. very funny very witty yeah. timing very clever um, and she goes, I'm a witty person, and Troy is mm-hmm. just not a funny character. Yeah, she doesn't no. have it in her, and so I've never considered her that, well, and I've tried. That's the thing. Is and she's, she's categorized as an empath. She's supposed to feel other people's right. feelings. She's supposed to feed and, off those, not generate right, her own. Right, yeah, exactly, yeah. She's right. supposed to feed off other people's but, feelings. Uh, but so she would try to do, to, to do like different jokes inside of Next Generation, and I guess uh, Jonathan Ricks, was always, as a director, was always like, don't do that. No, do that. Yeah, don't, that. That's not what you want to do. Right. Um, and so she she just kind of chalked it up to Troy was just not a funny character. Yeah. And all of a sudden in First Contact, she gets drunk with Zephram Cochran. Yeah. And it's one of the best scenes in Star Trek of all time is her drunk in the bar on tequila. Yeah. And, and Zephram Cochran dancing in the background and, you know, doing that number. Yeah. Great Star Trek. Great, great stuff. Um... But uh, First Contact ha- has kind of that special, you know, it's it's the best Next Generation movie by far. Mm-hmm. I would put Voyage Home right up there in that conversation mm-hmm. as well. I don't think, and I've said this before, and I know you disagree, I don't think Wrath of Khan holds up nearly as well modern day mm-hmm. as, as those other two videos do. I, I think those two are very relatable on a modern standard mm-hmm. and and for the storytelling and the and the graphical effects and whatnot mm-hmm. i can watch those movies today i have a hard time watching uh, the I, I would say that there's some effects in very Rathacon hard time that are very it. cheesy some of the stop motion with the little earwig thing that goes into right uh, check off here e- e- even that's pretty cheesy e- but even the cinematography doesn't hold up nearly as well today mm-hmm. The, the scene cuts are very abrupt. There, There's a lot of times where I'm confused of where uh, I'm at and why we're telling the story this way. I don't way. know if I ever ever got... The thing I don't... The, the one negative thing I will say about Wrath of Khan that was just kind of out of nowhere was like, oh, Kirk's got a son? Right. It's like, he's, he's got a... Like, when did he have time for a family? Like, yeah, I know. It's like, he's got a... I mean, obviously the whole joke was like, Kirk was sleeping around the galaxy, so he's got to have something yeah. out there somewhere, right? Yeah. But they didn't explain that at all. They just like, oh, he's got a son. So I was like, oh, all right, I guess. Uh. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, I respect Wrath of Khan for what it was in mm-hmm. the day, and it was a very good sci-fi I, film. I still think it's, it's very really much nice. like Road Warrior, like like. Uh, um, oh, you're talking about the the, the very first Mad Max. Mad Max. That's still a good movie too. It's not. <laughs> it is. Look at it from modern storytelling I, okay, I think, standards. I think last time we talked about this, yeah. I did admit that I had not seen it in a long time, and I should probably go and watch it, it again. Doesn't. And I have not watched it in a while. It but doesn't. I saw Wrath of Khan not too long ago, maybe about four years ago. I watched right. it again, and I still enjoyed it. I still think it was very, very good. Uh, see, I watched it a couple years ago because we watched it before we went to go see Into Darkness. Because mm-hmm. I said Into Darkness is basically going to retell the story of Wrath of Khan. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we knew that kind of going into it without right. knowing the full story. Right. And what I didn't like was essentially the character bent Kirk and Spock inside of Into Darkness. Mm-hmm. That, uh, you know, Kirk is on the inside crying, you have and will always be my friend. That's not freaking Kirk. You yeah. set him up as a badass in yeah, 2009. I know, I know. Why regress him back to the sniveling yeah. little weasel yeah. who's sacrificing himself for the ship? That's not Kirk. Yeah, yeah. For for God's sakes, yeah. man. They, they, they left character... Right. Development, yeah, out the window. It was, that was awful. Horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. It was awful. Yeah, it was not But we rewatched Wrath of Khan at that time, mm-hmm. and it still didn't hold up. I didn't like it then. I disagree. I think uh, I think Wrath of Khan holds up quite well. And again, but, it's maybe somewhere in the middle, but but I don't think it holds up nearly as well as Voyage Home, as First Contact. Yeah. There are movies in the Star Trek realm that are mm-hmm. timeless. There are episodes that are timeless, right. and there are some that just do not hold up at no, all. No, yeah, yeah. And absolutely. I think Wrath of Khan just doesn't hold up at all. Yeah. So. No, I think Wrath of Khan does. There are some cheesy effects in there still, but I think, you know, a, as a all-encompassing movie and a homage to Star Trek, I think it's I think it's way up there. Right. As far as I think one of the best space battles I've I, seen in, on. I think on it is one of the better stories overall, mm-hmm. but I don't think the movie holds up. I think it tells a really good story. I think the cinematography doesn't hold up. As mm-hmm. a viewer who who watched it twenty years ago. 
and then came back to it um, with watching nothing but modern movies since mm-hmm. then. I don't think the storytelling inside of the movie holds up as well as it should. Um, and, and, and definitely not having that, that sentimental piece with me because that was year, a couple of years before I was born was Wrath of Khan coming out. Um, so I didn't grow up as, as a nine year old watching it. You didn't watch, well, you didn't, right. you probably didn't start out watching the original series. You probably started out. I with, started out watching TNG. Yeah. See, right. I was originally watching right. the original series. And thank God I didn't have to suffer through, through series one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to jump straight into season two. Yeah, no. Uh, well, okay. I was still, when season one of Next Generation came out, I was still young enough to really not appreciate right good storytelling. Right. I was just like, oh, Star Trek's back on TV. Let's go watch it. We got good. <laughs> well, good because yeah. season one didn't do that. Yeah, I know it was. Well, I mean, as a young kid, you don't you don't know. Right. I mean, like people think you know, uh, uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl or whatever that movie was. That was a, a great. When you're a kid, you like stupid stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. When you watch it now, it's like. Eh. But I, I still feel Wrath of Khan was, was, was still very good. And I <laughs> Craft, so what you're saying is I respect your opinion, but you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it is my channel, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Never see the, saw the final few seasons of SG-1. Uh, missed the whole Ori, uh, Ori plot, I'm assuming you're saying. Um, I watched most of SG-1. I don't think I watched the final few. I know SG-1 fell off with the last couple seasons. I've mm-hmm. heard that a number of times. And I kind of stopped watching it. It was around the time that I was getting into other things yeah. and, and whatnot. And uh, and I I don't know that I've ever seen the the end of SG One, um, but I can speak for about the first six seasons. And the first six seasons of Stargate SG One are amazing. Mm. Yeah, um, I think I think I stopped watching SG One like around season four or something. Yeah, like I, I made it to like maybe five, maybe no. six. I think, yeah. but there were there were eight or nine seasons. I of thought SG-1. the very beginning of SG One was pretty good. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, they made the movie to set up the TV yes, show. Yes, yes. And uh, and and I thought the whole thing was expertly yeah. done. Yeah. Um. You know, so. Yeah, SG One was filmed in my city. That's awesome. Nice. Uh, like the Pac Man shirt with the beers. I was going to comment on that as well. Yeah, I yeah. love that shirt. Yeah. That's an awesome shirt. So my wife got it for me, actually. Yeah. Yeah. She knows me. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, anyway, it is 10 after 10 o'clock, so yeah. uh, I think we are going to sign off of this yeah. one. Uh, yeah. I think it's been a pretty good show. Yeah, it's been a great show. I, I made it, it myself. I, I'm, I made it through the show, even though I bit my cheek earlier in the day and actually drew blood. Well, you are cleansing it with alcohol. So I am. Fine. Yeah. It's a little bit numb at this yeah. point. But uh, I was actually a little bit worried going into the show and I think I started the show maybe slurring a little bit because I was trying to hold my tongue on that side of my mouth right, right. but uh, I think I'm a little bit better now but uh, yeah I think it was a pretty good show a lot of Star Trek talk at the end I think yeah. it's all very relevant you have your opinion and you're, uh, wrong. Like and you're wrong no <laughs> no 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 no. Uh, no I think if we look at IMDB ratings I think I'll be right Okay. I guess IMDb. Let's go look at IMDb Star Trek movies and see what what the rankings are. IMDb. Okay, let's look at. Uh, well, there's Beyond. We know that's gonna suck. Yeah, Star yeah. Trek movies. IMDb. Okay, there we go. Star Trek movies. There we go. So here's the original series. So we got Motion Picture, which is a six point four. Star Trek Wrath of Khan, seven point seven. Ooh, ooh. That's pretty good. Seven point seven. Uh, Search for Spock, six point seven. I agree uh, with that. It was a significant yeah, step yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Voyage, Voyage Home, Home 7. 7.3, 3, which is not as good as Wrath of Khan. Which is the second place rating. We got yeah. Final Frontier, which is 5.5. 5. Yeah, which wasn't great either. Undiscovered, Undiscovered Country, 7.2. That was that was actually not a bad one a either. A sneaky good entry in the series. Yes, that's right. It's not one that's remembered very well. First Contact, 7.6. Ooh, you son of a... Yeah, there we go. A little bit better. We're close, though. It's close, en- it's close enough for personal opinions. 2009, 8. Uh, I think it's just because it's more modern is yep. really what I want to say because it's like the age of the internet and stuff like that. Right. But to be how f- did the animated series series season one get an eight point three? Uh, I don't know. Or no, this is the original series. Oh no, I think that's a documentary. Okay, boldly go. Yeah, I think that's a documentary. Gotcha. No, this is Star Trek TV series nineteen sixty six nineteen sixty nine. Got an eight point yeah. three. Oh, well, nostalgia wise, that yeah. makes sense. Next Generation got an 8.6. Okay, good. DS9 got a 7.9. Oh, that's got to hurt you. A little bit. <laughs> it's a little offensive, if I'm, if I'm going to be hey, honest. Yeah. 
Five Voyager eight. seven seven. Uh, I would personally give it a little bit lower, but that's okay. I kind of agree with that. Like I said, the lows in Voyager were low, but the, but the highs, highs were, were just as good. good. Yeah, and and so and I think I said this before. I think I kind of like the video games better than the series. That they put out. Elite Force was Elite an amazing. Game. One and two were very good. Amazing games. Yeah, they were very good. Yeah. Uh, Star Trek Enterprise seven point five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a little high. high. Yeah, that's a little high. That's a little high. So yeah, overall, I was right, but not by much. With within within a one or two point. Um, Ooh, Metacritic sixty seven on Wrath of Khan, seventy one on First Contact. Okay. One. This is there we like go. I said, I said it was. It's one of the threshold of of yeah. of, uh, of one or the other. And an 82 for 2009. Uh, you know what? Okay, you go back and watch that Star Trek movie, and it's still a pretty good movie. Yes. It doesn't seem like a Star Trek movie to me. It's a very good we action said, movie that's Star Trek themed with a lot of lens flare. I, I said at the time it felt a lot more like Star Wars. Yes. It, it, it felt very... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why I think it's racing so to high. the next objective. Everybody at this point in time, because this came out 2009, right? Okay. Yes. Um, before then, the last Star Trek official Star Trek movie is 2002 Nemesis, which bombed. It was, it was not, not good. good. It was not good. Right. People will, were starved for yes. a good Star Trek content. Yes. Good Star Trek content. Here was something that was action and, and Insurrection fresh. was 98, and that was new, honestly yeah. worse than Nemesis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was fresh, it was new, it was action packed. People were like, oh, this is pretty good, we liked right. it. And then after the initial thing, they took a step back. They're like, ah, you know what, it's good, but it's not really a Star Trek, you know? Right. Um, and I think that's what Star Trek has been since then. They're like, okay, this first initial thing, we put a lot of action in there. That's what we gotta do now. And that's what it seems to be now. That's what. Uh, uh, Discovery is that's what the yeah, all those other yeah it's it's yeah it hasn't become exploration and exposition and diplomacy right and solving a mystery type of a thing it's all been like what can I punch what can I shoot at what can I blow up and 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 I think that's where they got off with Enterprise and Discovery was there's always been current political events tied into Star Trek yeah. Uh, TNG and DS9 especially. Yeah, yeah, they did. Have, they this. had some really good, really good um, with uh, with uh, with DS9 with a lot of the Cold War kind of stuff with with the Dominion. I mean, this yeah. was well post Cold well, War. Even even original series. But remember, this was only like six years after the fall of of the Wall. Yeah, and and so there there was a lot of of weird feelings internationally and and mm. with with border tensions and everything else. And um, there were a lot of. Uh, non-political just just uh personal issues that were that were voiced during yeah uh during ds9 as well that that kind of took center stage um but i i think discovery and and enterprise kind of fell into the loop of trying to be breaking bad and game of thrones and, oh, right, and those kind right, of things right, right. where every single episode is a cliffhanger yeah, where where you're you're waiting on bated breath for that next yeah. episode, but they couldn't build that tension. It right. doesn't work in that universe. Yeah. Um, and so I'm hoping Picard goes a different direction. Well, it looks like Picard is going to be an overarching storyline. Yes, a big overarching storyline. Yep. I don't think they're going to have individual uh, episodes like like the Next Generation was, and like most Star Trek ones were. Um, but that might not be a bad thing. If it's done right, it still could be okay. What what, what I'm hearing is Picard is going to be 10 episode seasons. Okay. Very similar to Game of Thrones. That's, and, that should and, still and be fine like if it's done right. Because it can't... Picard at this point in this new series, he's not a captain anymore. He's, right. not, he's retired. Right. So they have to come up with a storyline to bring him in. Yep. And so it has to be a single issue. Yes. And because it's a single issue, they can't make it you know episodic this issue this week this issue this week and, this issue this week and and they're not and it doesn't make any sense right uh, and they're they're not going to do what the original star trek next generation could do and have an entire episode de- dedicated to the character direct 
uh, development of Ensign Road Laren. Yeah, right, right. They can't. Um, yeah. Where where that was a very common thing because remember the original or TNG and DS9, those were 25 and 32 episode seasons. Yeah. Where it was 42 minutes per episode, and mm-hmm. you could spend four episodes exploring yeah. quirks. Yeah, you, you know can, whatever. You can, you can afford Phil. And 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 you could afford Deanna going on a soul searching journey. Right. And, yeah. and Worf, you know, going off to to. Mm-hmm. To fight for his ancestors and things yeah. like that, Re- reclaim his house name. Yeah. You're not going to get any of that. This is going to be a single narrative, yes, uh, adventure into space. And again, it that might not be a, it, it's not traditional Star Trek, but it might not be a bad thing if we'll done the right way. If done the right way, right. that's true. Yeah, I've done the right way. Anyway, we could talk about this all night long. We just yes. spent another eight minutes on right. our tangent, <laughs> so we are going to leave you here. Yeah. Uh, this has been episode 92 of Talking Heads, your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. Join us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific time yep. right here on YouTube. If you enjoy the channel, consider donating to the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. Minimum donation of $1 gets you exclusive access to the Discord server where you can chat with myself and the other host from Talking Heads. I'm there. And unfortunately not learn anything new about Borderlands 2, but dive further into Star Trek tech and engineering talk. All right. Uh, Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Cheers, guys. Or morning, wherever you're from. Yeah. I don't care. Mostly morning. I don't care where you're from. Yeah, we're we're like the last to go dark. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Night, guys. See you guys.